everyone. Mörgja sér. And I'm here with my Katarúni. <laughs> so in today's video we're gonna talk about Shane Dawson, aka the biggest empath on this goddamn planet. Yes, I'm not joking. Shane Dawson, he's a huge empath and not only that, he's also extremely nervous and also very sensitive and he likes nothing more than making documentaries to help people and I'm sure all of you at home would be like wow, he sounds like a pretty nice guy well, he is not actually Shane Dawson is the biggest liar and manipulator on this goddamn website and Shane Dawson's empath sensitive boy is just a persona that he puts on for camera to like to get away from criticism and also to do very shady things without being called out and in today's video we're gonna talk about Shane Dawson's lies and all of his manipulations and let me tell you one thing I expected this video to be 45 minutes max but whoopsie daisy this video is over two hours so this is not a video this is actually a freaking movie but the reason why this video is so goddamn long is because Shane Dawson he literally just can't stop manipulating people and lying and before we start I just want to let you know what we are going to talk about in this video so you can't of know First of all, I will tell you a small story about why I dislike Shane Dawson very much. Then we will take a short look at his documentaries. Personally, I would not call this documentaries. Like overrated vlogs, in my opinion. And then we're gonna take a look at Shane Dawson's clown essay. Yes, do you remember this? Yeah, we will take a look at that. And then we will take a look at an apology video that Shane Dawson made five years ago mm -hmm, very spicy and then we're gonna compare that video to his newest apology video and let me tell you that is gonna be extremely spicy then we will take a look at Tati's video because there are a lot of interesting things in that video regarding Shane Dawson <sighs> and then comes the most disturbing part of this video and that is, we will take a look at Shane Dawson's old videos that are extremely offensive and very disturbing. And I will let you know when that part comes so you can skip over it because I totally get it if you don't want to watch this because it's going to be very disturbing. And I know a lot of you are probably sensitive or you just don't want to watch it. And then we'll talk about a lot of more things. So grab some popcorn and orange juice, everyone, because this video today is going to be very spicy! Also, this video is gonna be filled with bad English. Yes, because English is not my native language, so I will probably make a lot of mistakes. Yes, and also for all of you wondering what kind of- Oh, hi, hi, Kataruni, hello! But yes, for all of you wondering what kind of accent I have, um, it's an ice cream accent. Yes, it's Icelandic accent, so now you know that. Hi! Hi! Oh! Whoa! Oh my god, I almost fell off my chair! <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, but yeah. But now, let's start with the story, because I think this story is very important for this video and I'm sure a lot of you will find this story very interesting. And this is a story about how I started to dislike Shane Dawson. And yeah, I started to dislike him way, way, way before the scandal happened, because there was an incident that happened a few years back that made me be disgusted by him. So, between the years 2008 and 2015, Shane Dawson here used to make comedy sketches. Sounds fun? No, not fun, because during that time, it was very popular to make videos that had offensive and black humor. And it was very popular to make fun of gays, women, and minorities. Yippee, super fun, right? Absolutely not, horrible times. And during that time, I was just a small kawaii teenager. And one thing about me as a teenager, I was extremely nervous, I had a huge anxiety, and I was extremely, I repeat, extremely sensitive. I could, for example, not handle like watching horror movies because it would hurt me a lot. And I also could not watch videos that had offensive and black humor in it. So mm, it was very hard for me to find creators that I really liked that were like family friendly and did not have black and offensive humor in their videos. Luckily, I found few creators that I really liked and I tried my best to like avoid everyone that made 
videos that had black and offensive humor in it. But here's the thing. There was one creator that I tried my best to avoid at all costs because his videos were way, 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 way worse than anyone else on this platform. And that person was Shane. Dawson. And like I said, a lot of YouTubers back then were making black and offensive jokes. But what Shane Dawson was doing back then was not only black and offensive jokes. What he made was so freaking disturbing and so disgusting. For example, he was extremely racist. He was sexualizing animals and children in his videos. And then he just did so many disgusting things that were that are just absolutely not okay. And what he also really liked to do was to humiliate people and make them feel horrible just for a comedy sketch. What he was doing back then was so disgusting. And I still remember that I tried my best to avoid him at all costs. Like out of everyone, like he was the worst guy on YouTube and I just, I still remember this, how much I tried to avoid watching his videos because I knew they would actually hurt me because I was so sensitive for things like that. But then, one day, this video popped up in my recommendations. When I saw this, I thought this was just gonna be a family friendly parody of beauty gurus. I mean like, the thumbnail looks like that, right? I did not notice what name was next to the thumbnail. So I clicked on this video, and this is what I saw. Hey everyone, my name is Fifi Fierce, and I'm 16 years old, and I know what a lot of you guys are thinking. I wanna f a f so hard, I wanna f so hard in a tight little f I wanna rip her open and make a f all over her nice white bed sheets. <laughs> this went straight to my freaking heart and hurt me so deeply that it actually made me cry. I'm not making this up, because I was just so sensitive for jokes like this, and also another thing, what kind of adult man would make a parody about a 16 year old beauty guru like that? Like, this is absolutely not okay to talk about a 16 year old kid like this, especially when you're 20 something man. Like, you must, there, there must be something wrong with your brain if you ever think about making a parody like this. Like, just, just even now, many years later, I still get so mad watching this video. Like, I just, oh, so mad. But yeah, like I said, I got so, so, so hurt when I saw this a few years ago. And I got so angry and hurt that I decided to write a comment. And I don't remember exactly what I said, but I said something like, this is absolutely disgusting. You should never joke about something like this or something like that. And I did not expect anyone to notice my comment because so many people were commenting under this video. And then later this day, I decided to go back and check out this comment that I wrote. And oh my God, what I saw was like hundreds of replies under my comment from Shane Dawson's fans telling me to do horrible things to myself and just saying horrible things to me. For example, they said the classic, you should go and oof yourself. Yes, very classic. And then they said, I should stop being so sensitive. And then they said a lot of more horrible things that I'm not gonna say to you right now. And seeing so many people attacking you simply because you were calling Shane Dawson out because he was making horrible, disgusting jokes that he, sh that he should not be making made me cry for a freaking week straight. I'm not making this up. This was just so hurtful to see. And also to see this grown man make a jokes like that. It's so freaking disgusting. So yeah, this happened to me a few years ago. And this made me be disgusted by Shane Dawson. And now, seeing that, Shane Dawson has became the biggest empath on this planet. Ooh, I'm sensitive. I just want to help people. No, Shane, there's no way that you went from this disgusting, offensive man that liked nothing more than hurting other people, and making fun of other people, and humiliating other people, and then in only four years, you went from that into, I'm sensitive, fans protect me, I cannot handle hate. <laughs> no, Shane, I don't believe you. And now, oh, and I feel so good making this video because now I feel like I'm like doing a revenge on Shane. Take this, Shane. <laughs> I'm making a video on you now. <laughs> So this was my small story about why I dislike Shane. And now let's move on to Shane Dawson's documentaries or long vlogs. The documentary or long vlog that I'm gonna focus on right now is the one that Shane Dawson made about Jake Paul. And in that documentary, Shane Dawson is trying to find out if Jake Paul is a sociopath. Yes, I'm not joking. And this documentary is full of clownery. The therapist I want to talk to is somebody I've met before. When I asked her, like, hey, can we do a video about YouTubers being sociopaths? She literally said to me, um, 
there's a few. She doesn't even know that this is what the video is. She thought it was just gonna be a video about sociopaths. She doesn't know that Jake Paul is involved. Okay, so basically, Shane Dawson thought to himself, hmm, I wanna make a documentary about YouTubers being sociopaths. And I asked her, like, hey, can we do a video about YouTubers being sociopaths? And Shane Dawson called the therapist Katie, and he was like, hello, Katie, the therapist. I wanna make a documentary about YouTubers being sociopaths. And the therapist was like, okie dokie, but then Shane Dawson changed his idea, and he was like, hmm, no. I rather want to make a documentary about Jake Paul being a sociopath. And he did not let Katie the therapist know that he changed his idea. She doesn't even know that this is what the video is. She doesn't know that Jake Paul is involved. So Katie the therapist was at home probably doing ton of research about like YouTubers being sociopaths. And she was like, <laughs> like doing ton of research because she wants all of the facts to be correct. And she just wants to make a very good documentary. And then Katie the therapist goes to meet Shane Dawson. And I guess Shane Dawson was like, Psych! Got him! No, 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 no! Today's documentary is not gonna be about YouTubers being sociopaths. It's gonna be about Jake being a sociopath. Got him! I got you good! What? Am I the only one who finds this extremely unprofessional, Shane, that you're just changing the topic? Without letting the therapist know! She doesn't even know that this is what the video is. Like seriously, she could have done ton of research at home about Jake Paul being a sociopath. It, like, if I would be a therapist, I would be like... Wow, Shane, you are incredibly unprofessional, okay? You did not let me know when you changed your idea, huh. So I could not, like, do a lot of research about Jake Paul? Wow. You're a clown, Shane. I don't want to work with you anymore. See ya! Yeet! And then I would go away. Is that only me that finds this very unprofessional that Shane is just changing things? <sighs> yes. And also, am I the only one who finds it very dumb that Shane Dawson is like, I want to find out if Jake Paul is a sociopath. I mean, like, there are so many other cluster B personality disorder out there, but why is he only focusing on sociopath? I mean, like, we have antisocial personality disorder, which includes sociopathy and psychopathy, then we have narcissism, and then histrionic personality disorder, and then borderline personality disorder. And I guess it would make more sense if Shane Dawson would, like, include all of this and be like, hmm, which one does Jake Paul have? Is he a narcissist or a sociopath? I mean, like, I think it may, but still at the same time, that would be so freaking ridiculous to do this. I mean, like, I think it's never okay to blast it to a huge audience what kind of personality disorder someone has. No, Shane, this is not an entertainment. Ridiculous. <laughs> I hope I did not give Shane Dawson a brand new idea, you know, of a new documentary. Hi, everybody. In today's documentary, I'm gonna find out if Jake Paul is a sociopath, a psychopath, or a narcissist. Oh, I'm nervous. <laughs> and wait, why stop there? Let's also find out if Jake Paul is a gay, lesbian, bisexual. So what are, like, the bullet points, for example, like, in a book, what would it say? So now, Katie, the therapist, and Shane Dawson are just talking about traits that sociopaths have. The sociopaths believe that, like, the law doesn't apply to them, so they always just think they're better, bigger, more important than everybody else. And then, they say this. I'm feeling sick. <laughs> it's really gross. It's just creepy. Excuse me? What kind of therapist calls someone that has a personality disorder gross and creepy? It's really gross, and it's just creepy. I'm not a professional when it comes to things like that, and I'm not even educated when it comes to personality disorders, but I don't think therapists should talk like that about people that have a disorder. It's really gross. The thing is, there's already so much of stigma against personality disorders in society, and it doesn't help that a freaking therapist is talking about a personality disorder like that. Calling it gross and creepy. Oh, it's just creepy. Not everyone that has antisocial personality disorder are like evil people that just want to take a knife and eat other people. <laughs> no, not everyone are freaking evil. This is so ridiculous. I can't feel like Shane Dawson here and Katie, they're kind of stigmatizing sociopaths or people that have antisocial personality disorders because a lot of them just want to live a normal life. But go off, Shane. What am I? I feel like I attract sociopaths. Potentially. I'm not so soft. But I also feel like I'm like 
get them and I want to help them. No, I don't like where this is going, Katie. Please don't say it, Katie. No, 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 no. Here. No! So an empath. I've heard that before. No! He shared with me that he was an empath and that he could feel all of my pain. This was the moment that Shane Dawson decided to become the biggest empath on this goddamn planet. Katie, why did you have to teach Shane? this word but yes the reason why i wanted to show you this clip is because shane dawson he sure loves assuming other people's disorders you will see that later in this video oh and also he likes to assume his own own disorder disorder he's an empath haha <laughs> you know yeah but yeah basically that's why i wanted to show you this because it's kind of important for later in this video I don't want to watch more of this documentary but i know just to let you know how this documentary is gonna be like it's just shane be like i'm nervous holding his face like <laughs> meanwhile this therapist is like you know what jake paul he's breathing like a goddamn sociopath and shane is like i'm nervous you know this is the whole you know you know documentary in a nutshell <laughs> Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Gracias. It worked. <laughs> now let's take a look at Shane Dawson's notepad apology. Oh hi! Hello! Oh my god, so my cat, Neta, she's gonna be with us in this video, yes. And she's gonna be in this box the whole time because she's in a very catty mood. You know, cats love boxes, so yes. So, first thing first, we're gonna take a look at Shane Dawson's notepad apology. <laughs> Are you excited? I am. <laughs> I'm not excited. But a little bit of backstory before we do that for all of you that have forgotten. I'm sure no one has forgotten. But basically, almost one year ago, um, Tati and James Charles got into a huge serious drama. And it all started when Tati uploaded a video saying that James Charles has gotten very entitled. And also, she accused him of very, very, very serious accusations like she said that he was a predator that was preying on straight men which is this is like absolutely horrible to say something like this about someone and then shortly after Tati uploaded that video saying all of those bad things about James Jeffree Star jumped on the train and he was like yes everything what Tati is saying is correct I have proofs that James Charles is a predator haha <laughs> and then James Charles got so much of hate and he lost so many subscribers and of course like every normal person he started to get very depressed and he got into a very dark place which I understand so well well. But then James Charles, he pulled up the biggest Uno reverse card and he was like, haha, all of you are lying and he proved it and then, you know, he got his trust back and like all of his subscribers. So yeah, that was the backstory in a nutshell. But then recently people started to have the feeling that Shane Dawson was involved in this whole thing and he was actually helping Tati to like plan the video and try to take James Charles down. And more and more people started to contact Shane being like, mm, Shane Dawson, were you involved in this whole thing? And then Shane had the feeling that he had to answer um, these accusations about him. So he wrote this amazing notepad apology. And to be honest, uh, Gloop, I'm very scared to, 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 to read this ap 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 apology because I have the feeling that this apology is gonna be very angry. Oh, wait. Oh, oh he is actually going to talk about this apology. Let's listen. And I wrote that essay, which I wrote it to be funny. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, I was actually worried for nothing because according to Shane Dawson, this apology is supposed to be very funny. To be funny. <laughs> so all of you at home, be ready to slap your knee like this and throw out some ha ha ha's because this apology is sure gonna make us laugh and slap our knees many times because this is supposed to be very funny to be funny so let's now read this apology not actually apology statement yes welcome to the circus okay a few questions that i've been getting lately okay did i know that she was thinking about making a video yes okay so he knew that she was gonna upload a video okay did i tell her to make a video no he says did i have any involvement in the video no according to him did i need that kind of drama to make good series no have i ever tried to ruin a career or make someone look bad in my 15 years on youtube 
No, according to him. So basically, Mr. Shane Dawson here is saying that he was not involved at all in this video. It was just uh, it was just her her idea to upload this video about James Charles. And uh, and then comes a question that he answers that makes me so freaking mad. How he answers, it's so like manipulative. Am I innocent? And then he keeps going and don't have a huge and anxiety provoking regrets about how I could have helped everyone handle everything better. No, I've had a pit in my stomach since all this happened. Like, oh, like, oh, the way he answered this, it's so annoying. He's trying so hard to look like a victim, like the way he answers this. Me, personally, I would trust Shane Dawson way more if he would just have said, Am I innocent? And then question mark not be like and have also an anxiety like like shut up shame Just say am I innocent question mark and then no I did things that I should not have done and oh my god now when I think about it I just I just see how horrible they were blah 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 not be like am I innocent and also have an anxiety um, no and but 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 everyone I have a pit in my stomach so all of his fans are gonna be like oh my god look how nervous he is now on to my final thoughts on the beauty the world and my experience in it oh my god i'm so excited the conspiracy palette was one of the best experiences of my life the series with Je with, with jeffrey changed my life and changed me as a person um you mean to the wars or just ask it but yes it helped me to be more confident blah 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 so to honor the series and what i learned from it i'm gonna say this oh my god i'm so excited to hear what he's gonna say now like don't you remember shane dawson said that this was gonna be funny to be funny so i'm sure all of us me and you we are now gonna like slap our knees and <laughs> laugh very much because i'm sure the funny party is gonna gonna happen gonna, gonna happen now because it hasn't happened yet so beauty corners are always involved in scandals oh my god i'm sick all attention speaking gameplay echo centric narcissistic fans spell two face thinking time bombs ready to explode and I ah he's done yelling finally my cat ran away because she doesn't was yelling so much wait Hi! Oh, look, my cat is back. I found her. Hi! Oh, hello! Are you okay? Oh, you don't have to run away, okay? All the yelling is done. Ah. Oh, look, she's back inside her box. Oh, hi! Okay, I can see that she's feeling very comfy. Let me just fix my hair a little bit because she doesn't destroy it by yelling at me. Oh, I can also see that your hair is also disgusting after all the yelling. Ah, now your hair looks beautiful. Wow, such a nice hair you have. <laughs> but yeah, <clears throat> now we're gonna take a look at... No, now we're gonna talk about what Shane was yelling at us about... Well, bad English, but whatever. So, basically, Shane Dawson here, he's yelling at us about um, beauty gurus that are narcissistic and always in scandals and also two-faced ticking time bombs ready to explode. Yes, they're talented, creative, smart, and love makeup, but they also joined the site of the internet that's obsessed with looks, money, power, fame, screenshots, and releasing private texts, voice memos, emails, and other receipts to paint someone else in a bad light. And it's weird to me, and I never en engage in that. Wow! Oh my god, Shane! You're such an empath! <laughs> wow! What a nice guy you are! Like you can see, everyone, Mr. Shane Dawson here, the biggest empath on this goddamn planet, he would never, never be around narcissistic, disgusting people that only care about beauty, power, uh, money, and are extremely narcissistic, or, most importantly, People that like to use private messages against someone to paint someone in a bad light. Or even worse than that, people that like to blackmail other people into silence by saying that they have dirt on them. Disgusting! Shane Dawson, the biggest empath of this planet, would never hang out with people like that. Oh wait, yes, he actually would. His best friend is freaking Jeffree Star. Like, is he being serious? Dirt on everyone, and they know to keep their mouths shut. He's just describing Jeffree Star right here, like this makes no freaking sense. Seriously, it looks like Shane Dawson was sitting down, ready to like write this statement, and then he was like, hmm, I wonder how I should like describe the beauty gurus. And then he looked to the left, 
So his best friend, Jeffrey Star, sitting there and he was like, Ah, I will just write about Jeffrey Star. <laughs> because this is just Jeffrey Star. Everything that he said, like, oh my God, seriously, Shane Dawson is the biggest clown that I've ever seen. <laughs> and then he keeps going, yes, Jeffrey is in that list of dramatic gurus. And he would admit that he would always be a family to me. And I love him, despite those characteristics. I, I, I'm i speechless, to be honest. And my cat is gone. That, that's a bad sign. So, basically, just a few minutes ago, Mr. Shane Dawson, the biggest empath of this goddamn planet, he was literally yelling at us, oh my god, that is right, about narcissistic gurus that only like power, money, and beauty. And also, the most disgusting thing, they like to keep receipts and voice memos and private messages to ruin other people's life. And then he's like, oh, and the stupid star is one of those dramatic gurus. <laughs> like, seriously, what you're describing, that this is not being dramatic. This is being a horrible, horrible person. Like, I personally would not call someone that likes to ruin other people's career with lies and like private messages that are not necessarily real. I would not call a person like that ha, so dramatic. Like, oh my god, did you see how this dramatic guru ruined that person's career? <laughs> like, no, I repeat, that is not being dramatic. That is being a freaking horrible human being. Just saying, okay? Oh, okay. Last heart, you regret making that video about James Charles. Probably. Does it mean we should see James as some poor, innocent, sweet angel? No, don't get it twisted. And then Shane says the famous sentence that probably all of you know that <laughs> James Charles is a young, egocentric, power hungry guru <laughs> who needs to be served a slice of humble pie the size of the freaking Empire State Building. Then he yells very loudly. Yes! And then Shane says that he has left the beauty community. And if you if and if you don't like that, just unsubscribe, okay? That's the end of this statement, kind of. And I don't know about you, but I find it a very big, epic gamer moment that Shane Dawson just joined the beauty community, collected like at least 20 million dollars from selling his palettes and making the beauty documentaries and then he just yeets away from the beauty community after he collected all of the money wow oh my god shane you're such an empath good job oh my god do you know what i find extremely annoying about this whole situation and that is this guy mr shane dawson the empath he who is like famous for making documentaries that are not really documentaries more like Long vlogs! This guy, who is famous for that, he gets the chance to create his own isotope palette and then he collects all of the money, 20 million dollars from selling palettes and then on top of that he creates so much of money from the documentaries that he made and then he just simply yeets away with all of his money and then on top of that insults the beauty community like all of you are just narcissists, bye bye! And runs away with his money. Like are you being serious? Why does this guy, who is not even interested in being in the beauty community, why is he getting the chance to make his own isotope palette? Like seriously, I think like the biggest dream of most of people that are doing makeup and interested in beauty, I think their biggest dream is like to create their own isotope palette one day. You know what I mean? Like not many beauty gurus get the chance to create their own isotope palette. So personally, I think it would be way better if some smaller beauty guru would get the chance to make their own palette instead of this freaking I'm an empath, I make documentaries guy. Like, are you being serious? Seriously, he doesn't appreciate the beauty community at all. Like, so ridiculous. He's being like, bye bye, you goddamn narcissist. I don't want to be part of your community anymore. I feel like this is just an excuse for him to eat away from the community by calling it toxic. And, I th <laughs> and the funniest thing is, he's like, bye bye, you narcissist. I'm gonna hang out with my boy Jeffrey right now. Eat. <laughs> yeah, but basically, I'm super sorry about this very long rant. But what I'm saying is that I just find it so ironic that Shane Dawson decided to become best friends with the guy who is causing like 95% of drama on YouTube, Shane. And shortly after Shane Dawson posted his clown essay to Twitter, you know what he did? He freaking did! 
deleted it. He freaking yeeted this clown essay away and tweeted this. I deleted everything. I'm done. For those who wanted me to address it, I did. I'm sure you can find it reposted somewhere, but I don't want this energy in my life or on my timeline. I'm too sensitive for this poop and I'm done. <laughs> How dare you? Yes, I'm talking to you, person watching this video. How dare you to call Shane Dawson out for his racism and sexualization of children? How dare you? Don't you see that he is extremely sensitive and he is a very big empath? You are worse than Satan for calling such a sensitive and empathic man out for his racism and sexualization of children and animals too. How dare you? Like. Shane, you are such a freaking clown! I just find it so ridiculous that Shane Dawson writes this apology thing, clown essay, and then he just deletes it and he expects everyone to forgive him because he's a sensitive empath! Oh, stop, stop giving me criticism! I'm having an anxiety attack! Like, this is not how it works, Shane. People, no, <laughs> it doesn't matter that you're a sensitive empath, people can still criticize you, you know what I mean? They they still have the right to do that if you don't disgusting things in your past. Shane, what, what a clown. Let's keep going, everyone. <laughs> ah, very tasty. Don't forget to drink your H2O, everyone. Yes. But Mr. Shane Dawson, he mentioned in, in, he mentions in the statement the, that he had so many fun memories from creating the conspiracy collection. <laughs> and here, oh, and here's a tweet. <laughs> Let's take a look at it. Some of my favorite conspiracy collection memories. Oh, look, he is crying from happiness. Shane here, he is crying from happiness. Oh my God, that's so nice. I mean, like, he is a huge empath, so how can he not cry from happiness? Yeah. Okay, so the first memory is the packaging. Wow. Yes, I agree. A very fun memory. Oh, whoa. And then here he is like drawing in the in the symbols and also picking the shades. Yes, that was very fun. I agree, Shane. And then some man with a lipstick. I don't. <laughs> who, who is this one? <laughs> who who am I? <laughs> who who is this man? I don't I don't know. I don't remember him. But yes. And then the last memory. Shane hugging his his family, aka Mr. Jeffrey Star. Oh my God, this is so beautiful! I'm almost crying myself. A <laughs> very beautiful memory, Shane. Oh, and Shane, do you wanna know my favorite memory from your conspiracy collection lens? I will tell you. <laughs> I love the memory when you created your own own look on your YouTube channel using your palette. <laughs> the makeup look was so beautiful. No, wait a second, you never did, Shane! You never used your palette on your channel and created an um, eyeshadow look. You never did! Huh, disgusting. Jesus Christ. Imagine creating a palette and then never using it. Jesus Christ, that's sad. You are so ungrateful, Shane. Seriously, this is what I'm talking about when I'm saying that it's very unfair that this guy who is not interested in makeup is getting his own palette instead of someone who actually likes makeup. One very great example of someone that really deserved um, his own ice the palette and that is James Charles I would say because he he is obsessed with his own palette and that's so beautiful to see he's always using it and that's how it should be you know what I mean you should be obsessed with your own palette you should love it you should want to always use it you know what I mean but yes let's move on to the next part right now <laughs> ah so thirsty but yes what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a look at an apology that Shane Dawson made five years ago. And this apology is about him doing blackface and also saying offensive jokes. And there is a reason why we're gonna watch this video. And later on we will compare this video to his most re to his most recent apology video. And yeah, okay, let's just take a look at this apology video. This video is is an apology. Um, and it's not a fake apology. I'm not. Nobody told me to do this. If anything, people told me not to do this. Like, Shane, don't talk about this. I'm just gonna raise more attention to it. It's just gonna, and but I want to. I want to raise attention to it. Oh my God! So brave of you, Shane. Wow. There's been a lot going on on Twitter, and basically saying that I am racist. First of all, I'm not racist. <sighs> Thank God. But what 
is not me defending myself or telling you why I'm not racist. And I don't like black people, guys. It's not that. I want all of you to pay attention to this part in particular. I don't like love black people, guys. Because he said that he is not, I repeat, he is not gonna be like, I love black people. Uh, this video is not, I don't like love black people, guys. I want you to pay attention to what he said that in this video five years ago. It's me apologizing because I understand why some people think that. So basically, right here, he's supposed to apologize for putting on blackface and also making offensive jokes about people of color. But then here, then here he is, blaming the people for being offended by this. I understand why some people... Ah, this is so... Oh my god. Ah, oh, Jesus. Okay. And I ignore it. And I just say, I'm not racist. So I ignore it. Um, and uh, even in the bottom of my heart, I'm kind of like, uh, maybe, I, maybe I have done something too offensive. Maybe I did go too far. No, because my audience isn't offended, so I'm fine. <clears throat> I wonder why Shane's audience, that was mostly white, edgy teenagers that looked at Shane like he was their god and could not do anything wrong, I wonder why they did not say anything when he was making the offensive jokes. <clears throat> so weird. It's very obvious why they did not say anything, Shane. These were like freaking teenagers that thought your, your edgy jokes were freaking cool. You cannot just put the blame on freaking teenagers, Shane. Oh my god, what a clown, am I right? Let's keep going. <laughs> it's a blog post about me doing blackface. Now, for those of you who don't know what blackface is, blackface is something they used to do a long time ago. Where white people would, you know, make their face black and they paint their lips white and they make fun of black people and it was really cruel and horrible. And I I'm gonna be honest, I didn't really know what it was up until literally a month ago. Um, I knew the term, but I didn't quite know any of the historical, you know, background and, and all, any of that. Okay, so basically, this video was filmed five years ago. And Shane Dawson just said that he learned about the historical um, background of the blackface one month ago. Which means Shane Dawson just learned about that when he was in his 20s. How is that even possible? Like, did you never go to school, Shane? Or did you never go to a history class, Shane? Like, how did you not know about the history of your own country? Like, how is that even possible? I'm just a barbaric European, but back then when he was making those blackface jokes, I knew that this was not okay. Like seriously, I knew it. Me, so ice cream barbaric foreigner, you know what I mean? Freaking, this is, he is such a joke. Like, oh, I'm actually angry that he thought, he just, oh, I did not know. Wow, did slavery happen? I did not know that, like shut up, Shane. Which didn't offend my audience. I never got comments about it, it was fine. And then again, he is saying that, oh, my audience wasn't offended. Like, he just, he can't own up to it, that he did something wrong. Like, he's always blaming someone else. Like, oh, my audience didn't say anything. And, oh, I understand why some people were offended. And the funny thing is, he said, my audience never said anything. But then he says this. There's this girl on Twitter who has really given me shit over the last few years. And, um... So here, he's talking about a girl that used to call him out when he was making offensive jokes like many years ago when he was making the offensive content and do you want to know what he did to that girl I think her point. I think okay so basically shane dawson here is admitting that you know there was this girl on twitter calling him out for making offensive jokes and what did he do he just he just simply blocked her just yeeted her out of his life for calling him out for offensive jokes disgusting so okay in a nutshell in this apology video right here he made five years ago he was talking about how his audience was never offended because my audience isn't offended so i'm fine that so making the jokes was completely okay you know put it on blackface and telling offensive jokes and then he was talking about how he just had no idea blackface was offensive but then at the same time he is saying that there was a girl that was always calling him out on twitter and he just blocked her when she did he got blocked her at one point this doesn't make any sense that he's saying oh my audience didn't say anything yes they did this girl was commenting on it on twitter and you just blocked her so it looks like shane dawson he was just creating this echo chamber of people that just love him and if someone was criticizing him or telling him that the jokes were bad he would just simply eat them away by blocking them or whatever so now we're done reacting to this video filmed five years ago and this video was actually way longer 12 minutes but he just he just kept talking about like breaking the toilet um, okay i just broke a toilet he just did not stop 
talking about breaking the goddamn toilet. Okay, I actually broke the toilet. Oh my god, what bothers me very much about Shane Dawson's apologies is that he's always trying to be funny. The whole toilet's gonna break. To be funny. He wants the people to slap their knees while, lis while listening to his apologies. No, when you're making apologies, stop trying to be funny, Shane. Like, oh my god. So yeah. Now we're gonna take a look at his newest apology and we're gonna compare this one to that one. Okay, are you ready for that? Uh, ugh, I'm very ready. <laughs> oh, I'm super sorry everyone, but I'm actually going to sleep now. Yes, um, I will see all of you tomorrow. Good night. Oh, no, no, wait, wait. You don't have to go to sleep. I will edit this video so you, you will all of a sudden see me tomorrow in a few seconds. Yes, so you don't go anywhere. Just sit there. Yes, okay, uh, good night. Welcome back to um, the next day. Yes, so now we're going to keep going talking about Shane Dawson. Um, I'm kind of thirsty, wait. Oh, jeez, I almost drowned. Ugh. Oh, and also before we start, can all of you please not comment about that I'm wearing the same sweater two times in a row. I know that's not that's not very cool to do that, but I'm wearing a red lipstick and I wanted to wear red with it, you know what I mean? So please don't roast me for wearing this sweater two times in a row. But yes, okay. So um, what we're going to do now is now we're going to take a look at the newest apology from Shane Dawson. We just took a look at the apology he posted five um, years ago and now we're going to take a look at the newest one. And the reason why he made the new one is because hmm, a lot of people started to find a lot of old clips of him being um, racist, doing blackface, and then also saying very offensive ki then saying very offensive things about kids. Yes. And okay, let's see how this apology is gonna be like. Hi. If you've been watching me for a while, then you know that I have done a lot of things in my past that I hate that I wish I could make go away, that I try to make go away by uh, deleting videos. Yes, I apologize for a lot of them, but I'm 31, almost 32. Those apologies suck. I don't know who that person is anymore. So basically, Shane Dawson here, he's saying that the apologies that he made in the past, for example, the one that we watched together, he made five years ago, he is saying that apology and all of the others absolutely suck. And he doesn't even know who that man is anymore. Disgusting, who are you? You're not Shane, who are you? Like, so he's basically saying that this apology that he made six years ago sucks and he doesn't know who this guy is. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. keep that in mind. Keep that in mind, everyone. Let's keep on. Yeah, I saw Jenna Marple's video and it really inspired me and felt like a sign from the universe that I want to do this. Okay, so right here he's saying that he saw Jenna Marple's video. Um, she made an apology video and she was apologizing for things that she did in her videos like 10, 8 years ago. And I got to say, her apology video was so good and genuine. Like, oh my god, she is such a, she is a nice person. I'm like, I've always loved Jenna Marples for the longest time. And her apology video was so good because she actually showed us clips that were like, you know, um, how do you say it? Like questionable or how, how I would say it in English, I don't know. But yeah, she was like showing us clips that were like not so funny and good in 2020. Wow, bad English moment I'm having right now. But yeah, she actually showed us clips and she was like, yeah, this clip, I'm not proud of this anymore. I did this like eight years ago. I should never have done it. She like her apology video was so freaking good. And the saddest thing about her apology video is that she actually left the internet because she felt so bad about hurting people. And oh my God, she has been such an um, inspiration to me. I just absolutely love her and oh my God. And the thing is, she also deleted a lot of videos that were like um, questionable and she even deleted videos that weren't that offensive you know at all for example like how boys are like and how girls are like and she just felt like those videos were, were like hurting people and oh my god <laughs> No, Jenna, you don't have to do this, okay? They were not that bad. This is so sad that she was like deleting videos that were like, I understand why she deleted some of the videos like that were actually like kind of questionable, but she deleted so many videos that she didn't have to delete. But yeah, so yeah, this was actually very sad. But yeah, but okay. Oh, and now back to Mr. Shane Dawson here. And the funny thing is, okay, let me tell you the differences between Shane here and Jenna Marples when it comes to deleting videos. So G Jenna, she just went like over all of her videos and she, she just picked the ones that were kind of like offensive. 
and questionable and she just deleted them and she then she also deleted videos that were like not even that offensive in my opinion but mr shin dawson here he literally deleted all of the videos from his channel imagine this imagine having so many offensive videos that you're like oh god damn it it's so hard to go through like hundreds of videos because you know hmm, so many of them are like offensive like 98 percent let's just eat all of them away haha <laughs> you know imagine making so many offensive jokes that you just simply don't know which 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 of the videos has the offensive jokes you know so you just delete all of the videos except one video actually he left up the I'm bisexual video. Love that, Shane. <laughs> I'm gonna start with all the racism that I put onto the internet as a adult, not a child. I was at least 20 when I started YouTube. Blackface was something that I did a lot, excuse. I made a video six years ago talking about it, but I didn't do the work. I didn't actually look into the history of it and why it's so wrong and why people were so upset because my excuse, oh, I was, I was just being funny. I, I love black people. I'm not racist. I was trying to be funny. That wasn't even your excuse six years ago. Oh my God, Jesus Christ. Do you remember when I told you that you should remember one part of the previous video? And that is when Shane Dawson himself said that this video right here is not gonna be me being like, oh my God, a lot of black people. It is not me defending myself or telling you why I'm not racist. And I, I love black people, guys. Uh, it's not that. And then, for some weird reason, right now, in this apology video, he's been like, Oh my god, the past me was like, I love black people. I made a video six years ago. My excuse, oh, I was, I was just being funny. I, I love black people. I'm not racist. I was trying to be funny. Uh, this video is not me defending myself or telling you why I'm not racist. And I, I love black people, guys. Uh, it's not that. He's trying so hard to, like, separate himself from his past self, acting like his past self is just like some another person that he absolutely hates, like disgusting, who is this? And then he is putting words in his past self's mouth that he didn't even say! He's, his past self literally said the same things that he's saying in this apology video. When I say I hate that person, I hate that person so much. Use. Oh, I was, I was just being funny. I, I, I love black people. I think it would have been a pretty good idea, Shane, that for this video that you just filmed that you had bought yourself this like glasses that have like nose and moustache on it and then you would just put it on and then you would be like oh, I have no idea who that guy is take a lot of that guy who is this <laughs> I don't know who that is <laughs> when I say I hate that person I hate that person so much use oh I was I was just being funny I, I love black people and I made the decision to play stereotypes of black people, or Asian people, or Mexicans, or uh, pretty much every race. Every race? Ah, yes, Shane, totally. It's ridiculous when people make fun of the race. Mexico, how dare they? Mexico is a country, Shane! You can be of any race and be from Mexico. But okay, I guess Shane Dawson here, he's talking about that he used to make fun of, like, Mexican stereotypes or something like this. And... Do you want to know what I find extremely funny? And that is Shane Dawson here! He doesn't even know the history of his own freaking country! Like, and then here he is, making fun of other countries! Wow, Shane! Earlier, Shane Dawson, he was like, Wow, was blackface used to mock, mock black people? I had no idea! Like, he was acting like he didn't know anything. And then, here he is, making fun of Mexico, when he doesn't even know his own history of his own country! Wow, oh my freaking god! That, that, if I should be honest, that is very sad, that you're making fun of other culture and other country, when you don't even know your own, like... <sighs> like, am I the only one who finds this super duper 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 ridiculous? Okay, but now I want to have a small rant. Yes, and this rant is gonna be about when it comes to make fun of like other countries and other languages and then when it comes to making fun of other races. Okay, let's start to talk about when it comes to joking about other countries and other languages. And um, if I should be honest, I think it's super duper duper fun to make fun of other countries and other languages. Like, I, I love it personally. I love roasting other countries, you know, eat some jokes at them, you know, it's super duper fun. And also at the same time, I love when people are roasting my country and my language. I think, I, I think it's very fun, you know what I mean? I love it. I love like good, you know, country roasts. It's very fun, you know what I mean? But it's very important that you keep the jokes 
very 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 wholesome and family friendly you don't actually want to like humiliate and or insult the people that are from the said country or the or the people that speak the language you just want to have like you just want like some family friendly fun you know what i mean and also personally when it comes to making fun of other countries and other languages you you kind of can only do it to your neighbor countries you know what i mean for example me as a european i love making fun of other european countries i actually go go that far and i also make fun of north america too Yes, I'm I'm kind of spicy. Yeah, on the same time, I like when people do that, do the same thing to me. You know what I mean? But here's the thing: I would never make jokes about, for example, countries in Africa or countries in Asia, because first of all, I don't really know their culture that much. I don't really know their languages that much, and and also I've never really met people from those countries. So if I would try to make a joke, it would probably just come off very racist and very ignorant. So I think it's very important that you make family friendly jokes about countries that you actually know about and that you're familiar with but when it comes to making fun of someone's race that is something that is never ever okay like you are just humiliating someone by the way they look and all of the races are very unique and beautiful in their own way doesn't matter if we have different skin color or if or different hair types it doesn't matter like literally every race has something unique about them that makes them beautiful. Like, no race is better than the other. We are all equally beautiful. Like, uh, it annoys me so much when someone is making fun of, of other people's appearance. Like, come on, you don't do that. Wow. But yeah, but basically, Shane Dawson, he has made fun of races. And I'm sure that the jokes that he made about Mexico were not, like, wholesome and family-friendly. They're, they're probably based on some bad stereotypes that Mexicans have in the United States. That's what I guess. I have seen the Mexican jokes. Let, let's just start, try to Google them right now. I hope my maid doesn't slip on this because you know how Mexicans like to file a lawsuit. I freaking knew it that he made that kind of joke about Mexicans. Luckily, Shakira. Uh, I don't know where she's from. You know where she's from? She's the only person Ugh. there that Ugh. is famous Ugh. besides coke dealers. Oh, Colombia! And he also called Colombians um, drug dealers. Very nice, Shane. I'm kind of scared now that Shane Dawson he is gonna roast my country next. No, Shane, please don't do it. Don't, don't, don't. You know what? The most annoying people are ice cream people. <laughs> I hate them. <laughs> Shane, you're a clown. Let's keep going. And I've talked about this before, but I. When I say I hate that person, I mean it in the most intense way possible. I hate that person so much. <sighs> Again, he is starting to separate himself from his past self. Like, oh my god, I hate this guy. Disgusting. This guy, he's not me. He's someone completely else. Just, again, just own up to it, Shane. Just own up to it that you made terrible jokes in the past. Don't be like, oh my god, I have an anxiety. Who is this man? No idea who he is. Never seen him before. Like, stop this. I'm not going to talk about this more, but oh my god, so annoying. Imagine what it would be like to be black and to see this white fucking guy do blackface. And the whole internet at that time being like, lol, that's insane. And I oh, this, what he just said makes me so freaking angry. Basically, he's saying the whole internet was like, lol. The whole internet at that time being like, lol. No, Shane, the whole internet was literally not like that. In the previous video that you made six years ago, you literally admitted that you blocked people that were calling you out on your jokes. And me, me right here, like I told you in the beginning, I absolutely hated your videos and I found your jokes so freaking offensive and they actually hurt me. And this freaking guy right here, Mr. Shane Dawson, he's saying that the whole internet was like, ha ah, over his offensive jokes. So basically he's saying that children from one years old up to old people to like 100 years old, all the races, white, black and Mexican, they were all laughing at his jokes back in the days. Ha ha ha. The whole internet, no, the whole internet was not doing that. There were so many people calling you out, Shane, saying that you should not be joking about things like that. But what did he do? He just freaking blocked them and creating this echo chamber of people that just loved his content. This is so annoying that he's not taking any uh, accountability. Accountability for his actions. He's just blaming everyone else. Like, oh, like all the people on the internet, they were laughing at me. How should they know that this was bad? Like, oh my god, just listen up, Shane. Brush your teeth and then drink orange juice. Shane! Oh, oh my god, look who I have here. Here is my Kataruni. She's back. 
I hope she wants to be with us in this video now at least because I'm sure Shane is done yelling. Kiss her. Right here I have a dried fish. This is her favorite food. Super sorry for speaking ice cream all of a sudden. Ah, but yes, okay, let's hope that she wants to be here. And also, wait, dry fish ASMR. Don't go! Oh, she's just behind me. Okay, good. I thought she was leaving. Also, fix my makeup a little bit. Yes, I changed the lipstick because the red was disgusting, to be honest, and I also fixed my eyeshadow. And to be honest, I'm kind of fixing my makeup a lot in this video to flex on Shane Dawson to show him that me, some person that doesn't really do makeup tutorials, I do more makeup tutorials in this video than Shane that has a palette. Ha, <laughs> take this, Shane, yeet. Yes. Uh. My cat is gone. She only lasted here for like one minute. Very sad, I know. Okay. Okay, enough of Kataruni break. Let's now go back to Shane Dawson. Okay. So there's a clip that has been going around again. A few years ago is when it came out. And they cut out all the parts where I said, you know, pedophilia is disgusting. And they put it together and it made it seem like I was, you know, talking about how it's normal. So gross, I would never say that. So right here, Shane Dawson is talking about when he went on a podcast. And for some weird reason, he started to talk about that he liked Googling na babies that are not wearing any clothes. And then he said that these babies that are not wearing any clothes were very um, spicy, if you know what I mean. But then on the same time he said that pedophilia is bad. Then some person on the internet decided to take this interview and cut it together. So it looks like Shane was talking about that he really likes Googling um, baby that is not wearing any clothes and says that Pedophilia is good. I don't. It's something like this. So I talked to naked baby. First of all, they were sexy. And then he published that video. And of course, so many people saw this and were super duper angry at Shane for saying something like that. But then Shane Dawson spoke out and said that this video was fake and it was cut together to make him look bad. And then he said like he is not a pedophile. Typed in naked baby. First of all. I don't understand why anybody would be turned on by that, but they were sexy. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm going to start by saying I am not a fucking pedophile. Then people just forgave him, which is completely fine, because at that time, this was like the only very disgusting video that has come, come to the surface on the internet. So people didn't really care. They were like, okay, whatever, just one bad joke from Shane. And I remember at the time, I didn't really care. I was like, okay, disgusting, but you know, whatever, I guess. But <laughs> that is about to change, everyone. But do we all remember when Shane said that he got inspired by Jenna Marbles to make this video? I saw Jenna Marbles' video and it really inspired me and felt like a sign from the universe that I want to do this. And the thing is, like I said, Jenna Marbles, she was showing us like clips, offensive clips, and she was talking about them. But Mr. Shane Dawson here, he's literally not doing that. Like I had to explain to all of you what like what he was talking about because he was not really saying anything. They cut out all the parts where I said, you know, pedophilia is disgusting. And they put it together and it made it seem like I was, you know, talking about how it's normal. So gross, I would never say that. A few uh, years ago, there was this clip of me going around, hey, moving on. Like he's not talking about this in detail. So maybe a lot of you that didn't really see what went down a few years ago, you were like, what is he talking about? Like he's not showing us like, oh yeah, this happened and this is bad. This is what is annoying me so much about this apology video that he's not taking any accountability for his joke. My past, I've had a lot of pain. I've had a lot of bad things happen to me. I've had a lot of issues with my family and I took that pain and I turned it into jokes. So here he's talking about that he had such a bad childhood. I mean like, okay, don't get me wrong. It's absolutely horrible that something like this... God damn it. <laughs> that something like this had to happen to him, especially when he was a child. Like, no child deserves to go through something so freaking traumatizing. But having a bad childhood does not 
give you the right to sexualize children. Shame! It's so ridiculous when adults are like using their like traumatizing past to like ex ex blah, to excuse something that they did as an adult that is extremely disturbing and especially when they did this to children. If you still have like pain in your heart from blah, blah, from something that happened to you when you were a child that was extremely traumatizing then you just have to go and get yourself some help and go to therapy to fix this and feel better. You cannot let this anger and all of this sadness and all of this hurt that you still have in your soul like affect other people in a horrible way, in a horrible way, especially children. You have to go and work on yourself. Like, come on, so freaking ridiculous. Uh, oh, I'm actually angry right now. Angry slurp. And also another thing, I think, sadly, like so, so, so sadly, a big majority of people on this earth have gone through something very, very, very traumatizing as children. I mean, like, at least once. But you know what, Shane? You don't see, like, most of Earthlings, like, go to children and be like, Hello, child! I'm feeling sad because, because of my past! Twerk for me! That person was filled with sadness. Filled with anger about their own issues. Uh ah, yes, everyone. Shane Dawson, he was extremely sad and extremely angry when he was making all of those offensive jokes for many years. <laughs> Yesterday, I was feeling extremely angry and extremely sad, so I went to a child and asked the child to twerk for me. You know, because I was feeling sad, you know? <laughs> oh my god, also what is bothering me very much is that he was saying, oh, I was feeling so sad and angry because of my own issues, so why not let it affect other people in a negative way? <laughs> yes, Shane. No, Shane. Ah, Jesus Christ, I broke it. Look, I broke my straw. Disgusting, because I angrily bit into it because I was so angry and sad. Look what anger can do to you. Wait a second. This, what just happened right now, can be a important lesson for Shane right now. Okay, so I like can see, Shane, when I was angry and I just bit this straw and broke it a little bit. Instead of sexualizing children. Yes, you should try that, Shane. Next time when you're angry, just bite the straw and not ask a child to twerk. Yes, I hope he learned something today. Yeah, let's keep going. I saw a vlog clip of me and my cousin who was, I don't know, probably 12 or 13 at the time. And we were, you know, I was doing the birds and the bees talk. That dumb, sh gross shit. So right here, Shane is talking about when he was doing the birds and the bees talk to his 12 or 13 year old cousin. And let me tell you something, this clip that he's talking about, this is not only doing the birds and the bees talk, this is way more disgusting than that. And we will take a look at that clip later in this video. But at this point in the apology video, I started to realize why Mr. Shane here was not including any clips, like about the things that he was talking about in this video. And that is because he's trying to manipulate the audience to make everything sound a lot more nicer and not as offensive than it actually is. Like seriously, this was not just the birds and the bees talk. This was extremely disgusting the way he was talking. But in this video, he's been like, oh, oh, I was just doing the family friendly talk. The birds and the bees to my 12 year old cousin because it's the age where kids start to like explore the other gender So I wanted to help her. This is not like this Shane like oh my god But we'll take a look at that a little bit later But at this point like I said I started to see how big of a manipulator Shane is and oh I really dislike this guy Oh my god and the saddest thing is is that this is not just only a one time where he was being like disgusting to his 12 year old cousin No, 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 no this 12 year old cousin would often appear in Jane Dawson's videos, I repeat, she was 12. And she would always play characters that were that were very sexualized. And often Jane Dawson would tell her to do very sexual things on camera. I repeat, on freaking camera. And now let's see what Mr. Shane here is gonna say about these times where he was literally sexualizing his 12 year old cousin. Let's see. But I do, because I posted it on the internet for everyone, not just my family. That wasn't, I posted like a stupid weird family moment for everyone. Yes, Shane, I agree with you. Ha! <laughs> what a weird family moment. Am I right, everyone? I posted like a f stupid weird family moment for everyone. Ha! I'm sure all of you at home have um, had similar moments with your family where you accidentally sexualize a 12 year old kid and you're like, ha! What a weird family moment, am I right? <laughs> I'm 
so stupid, I would think a weird family moment would be something like, let's say, the parents and the kids all go mud fighting and they start to throw like mud and like dirt at each other and then afterwards they're like, whoa, pff, what a weird family moment we had together, but no, that's not how it is. A real family moment is when you sexualize your 12 year old cousin. Yes, Shane. Family moment. <laughs> This guy is driving me crazy, I need to... Oh, wait. Wow! Kitty? Oh my god! The kitty has been here the whole time and I didn't see her! Hi, Greta! Oh my god, you are chilling! Wow! Finally, I'm to Mr. me. Oh my god, I had no idea that my cat was hiding behind me! What a weird a family moment, am I right? I need to move my setup so my cat can be seen. Uh, okay, I think you can see her very nicely now. <laughs> I'm so happy she's in this video. This made my day a lot more fun that she's gonna be with me. But yes, okay, let's keep going, everyone. People constantly saying, address it, address it, address it, talking about the James and Tati situation. I was just gonna ignore it, and then when I started hearing, oh, Shane masterminded the whole thing. <sighs> Shane, no one said that you masterminded the whole thing. Like, literally, like... Can, can Shane say one word that is not a freaking manipulation, at least in my opinion? Like, it's so annoying that he's being like, oh, people are saying, why are you behind me? Ah, yes. Yeah, like, he's being like, oh, people are saying that I masterminded the whole thing. No one said that, Shane. People are calling you out, being like, wait a second, were you involved? And then he's being like, oh, look at those people. They're saying that I masterminded the whole thing. No, no one is saying that. Seriously, I, I hate how he's twisting everything that people are saying about him. Like, it's so annoying. Like, people are calling him out, like, hey, this video that Tati posted, were you involved? Ha, are you saying I masterminded it? No, I know. Like, shit. Okay, please, people in the comments, can you please tell me if I'm making sense or am I going into too much of details about this guy? Just, I don't know, I don't, I, I don't know if I'm making sense. I wrote that essay, which I wrote it to be funny. Here he's talking about the statement where he tried to be extremely funny. And we have talked about the statement, so I'm not going to talk about it more. And like all of you remember, none of us, me or you, none of us, none of us slept or knee. At least once, so it was not funny at all. Shane, just saying. Hi. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. 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 Wow. Oh, I'm super sorry. <laughs> I was bothering her when she was taking a bath and she got annoyed by me. Okay, let's keep going. And I know a lot of people are saying that, well, why did you say you're leaving the beauty community? You were never in it. And you're right. I don't know why I said that. That was stupid. I was never in the beauty world. Yes, you were, Shane. You created your own palette. Even though there are some people being like, you were never in the beauty community. We would never accept you. Yes, he can't do us. I mean, like he created a, uh, I see the palette. That is very beauty to me, if you ask me, you know what I mean? So I would say, yes, you actually entered the beauty community by making yourself an eyeshadow palette and then sell it for $20 million and then you just eat by them narcissists and then runs away with all of this money. So not only were you in the beauty community, you left it in flames and then you called all of the people in it narcissists. Very nice, Shane. Very empath of you. Let's for the last year, I've been watching beauty channels every day. My whole homepage is just beauty channels and it's smaller ones. Ha! Did all of you hear this? Wait, I need to... <laughs> Hi! Uh, okay, I need to move so she will be in frame with me. Hi. So, you person watching this video, yes, I'm talking to exactly you person watching this. Yes, I'm sure a lot of you like to watch beauty tutorials and beauty gurus, am I right? And I bet most of you, <laughs> disgusting, all of you probably watch beauty gurus that have over a million subscribers or even 10 million subscribers, Puh, disgusting. You know what you are? You're a freaking sociopath. You only watch big beauty gurus. And like Shane Dawson, the empath here, he only watches small beauty gurus. My whole homepage is just beauty channels and it's smaller ones. Yes, Shane here, he watches super duper small beauty gurus. And like you, you sociopath, only watching very big beauty gurus. And you may be thinking, hmm, are you talking about Shane is talking about beauty gurus that have like 100,000 subscribers? No. And then maybe you are being like, hmm, 50,000 subscribers? 
No. Then maybe you are like, hmm, 10,000 subscribers? No. Maybe you're like, 1,000? No! Shane here, he is such an empath that he only watches beauty gurus that have like, four subscribers. Yes, Shane likes to watch the beauty gurus that like just started YouTube, they don't know how to use lighting, they don't know how to edit, they don't really know makeup, and they don't really know anything. Shane loves that! So, you like right watching on this? The middle of the lab. Yes, Shane like likes watching this. Hi guys, it's me, Glitter Barbie 69 and I'm back again with another makeup tutorial. And listen up, you barbaric swine, there is no such thing as unpigmented eyeshadows. Every eyeshadow is pigmented. I'm not joking. What you just have to do is you have to just take hard enough. Look. You just have to take very hard and that's how you get the pigment. And then of course you just eat it here. Yeah, so look how pigmented that is. And of course, if I want more pigment, I just... I just stick more. The more you dig, the more pigment you get. Easy peasy, look at this. Yes, that's because he's an empath. Shane, literally watching small YouTube gurus doesn't make you a better person. Are you being serious? Who cares if they're small or big? Seriously, and one thing, I'm not saying that having 10 subscribers is bad or having few subscribers is bad because I started like that too, you know what I mean? Everyone that starts YouTube has only like 5 or 10 subscribers for a very long time. You just have to make videos and like practice how to make videos and they will get better with time, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you can see, my videos are still bad. My camera is falling. Okay, I think like this. No! Oh my gosh! You want some slurp? Oh, look how excited she was about water. She wants to slurp. Wow, so thirsty. Ah, uh, whoa, <laughs> oopsie. <laughs> now we're gonna take a look at Tati's video where she was talking about that Shane Dawson them path. And Jeffrey Star, the dramatic guru, manipulated her into making a video about James Charles. Because both of them, the empath himself and the dramatic guru, they were feeding her lies about James Charles, calling him a predator, saying that he had many victims that were about to like come out and tell tell the story about how James Charles like abuse them or something like this. So yes, let's take a look at that video right now. Jeffrey Star first contacted me early in his YouTube career wanting to meet. I saw his pain and I felt that I could be a positive influence. Talking to me about how Shane Dawson was a big fan of mine and wanted to meet me. Shane said I was the queen of makeup reviews on YouTube, that I was his favorite beauty channel and he wanted me to teach him all about makeup. <laughs> Oh my god, like, okay, when I watched this video for the first time, and this part came, I could, like, imagine this in my head, like, Shane saying that to Tati, like, oh my god, I totally believe this, because this is such a Shane thing to say, you know what I mean? I can literally imagine him be like, oh my god, you're, you're the queen of makeup reviews, oh my god, can you, like, teach me? everything about makeup like literally you're queen yes queen <laughs> and ma while he's saying that to her he was like sensitive boy like <laughs> holding his mouth like the whole time <laughs> and almost having an anxiety attack because he's such a shy boy i cannot like imagine this the whole thing yeah <laughs> all i knew at the time was that shane dawson was the most adored documentary filmmaker on youtube ah yes documentaries very epic let me fix this goddamn clip that we just saw. All I knew at the time was that Shane Dawson was the most adored long vlog filmmaker on YouTube. One afternoon in April and I opened up and shared things that I've only shared with my closest of friends. Okay, I want all of you to pay attention to this part right here. Um, this part is very serious, but I think this part shows very much how manipulative and how big of a wolf in a sheep's clothing Shane Dawson actually is. Wait a second. Do I see a very small Kataruni booty right there? Ne Hello, Neta! Why are you hiding? <laughs> yeah, okay, let's keep going. <laughs> I shared that I had been the victim of sexual assault and told him how deeply I feel for others. She's talking about that in the past, she was assaulted in a very, very, very terrible way, like horrible. And being assaulted like that, it's one of the worst things that can ever happen to you. And I would say people that have been assaulted like that, they are really like sensitive 
for this subject, first of all, and they're also very sensitive for people they have also gone through something like this, and they want to protect other people, and they don't want other people to go through something like this, like they have gone through, because it's so freaking painful. And her, she didn't know Shane that much, and she opening up to him and talking about this makes her extremely brave, first of all. And it also shows how much she trusted Shane, because you don't tell a story like that to just anyone, you know what I mean? So it seems like she looked at Shane Dawson as a friend, or someone that she really trusted. Okay, let's keep going. He shared with me that he was an empath, and that he could feel all of my pain. <gasps> oh my freaking god, Shane! So imagine this. She just told him this very serious story that was probably extremely hard for her to talk about. And how Shane Dawson here responded, he was like, Oh my god, this is so sad. You know what? I'm an empath. I can like feel your pain. Like, ah, oh my god, shut up, Shane. Jesus freaking Christ. One thing I've noticed about Shane Dawson is that often when people are talking about like something hard that they went through, maybe in the past, Shane likes to flex on them and and all of his audience said his childhood was very bad and he is an empath, he is very sensitive, oh my god, I'm having an anxiety attack, like oh my freaking god. And here she was talking about this story and she was saying that because of what happened to her, she can feel very deeply for others and probably feel extremely deeply for someone that has gone through something similar to her. And then Shane is like, eh, yes, I'm just like that too, like shut up Shane. Oh my god. And then, uh, this just gets worse. He starts to talk like a goddamn cult leader. I swear to god. He pledged his unending friendship and loyalty to me forever in this life and in the next one. He told me that God had called me to be a beacon of light for the world. So that it could be a better place. She just told him this very serious story that was probably very hard for her to do. And he responded with, oh yes, I'm an empath. I can feel your pain. You know what? We, I'm nervous. We are going to be friends forever. And even after we die, we are, go <coughs> we are going to be friends in the next life too. And I believe, <gasps> I'm nervous. I believe that you have been chosen by God to like help humanity. I find the way he talks extremely alarming and very creepy to be honest and maybe some of you are like hmm, maybe Tati is just making this up well personally I think what she's saying right now is very true because I don't think she would just come up with something like this out of the blue you know what I mean and also Shane often talks like that for example when Jenna Marples uh, made her apology video Shane was like oh my god this is a sign from the universe I saw Jenna Marples video and it really inspired me and felt like a Sign from the universe. Like, no, this is not a sign from the universe, Shane. Jenna just wanted to apologize, like, I'd have been serious. And also, when he was making the sociopath documentaries, he was planning on making a documentary about sociopaths, but then a fan of his was like, Hey, Shane, can you make a documentary about Jake Paul? And Shane was like, Oh my god, this is a sign from the universe! Sign from the universe. No, Shane! He said that James Charles was a monster with many victims. Why would Shane Dawson, the king of truth on YouTube, be turning against James Charles unless these things he was saying were true? Why would Shane sit in my home and spend so many hours telling me these horrific allegations if they were not true? So at this moment right here is where I personally believe that the manipulation started. So Tati just told um, Shane that she went through something very hard. And Shane responded with, Oh, hello, fellow empath! I'm an empath just like you! I also feel for others! So, of course, like, Tati trusted him way more here because she thought that he was just like her, like, he that he felt pain for others. And also, Shane had been flexing on everyone that he was a sensitive boy that feels the pain from others. Like, he's always saying that in his documentary. So, of course, how, how, why, so how did she not trust him that he was just like that, you know what I mean? And then, you know, after she just told him this story, he started to say that James Charles, like her friend, like James Charles and her, they were very close. And Shane told her that her friend was a predator. And for someone that had gone through something like that, of course this hurt her extra much because she knew how this feels like, you know what I mean? Shane said that James Charles was a monster and that James Charles was hurting minors. Shane said he was planning to interview victims for the docuseries. He told me that something needed to be done to stop him from hurting more people. Eventually, I started believing what they were saying because they said they had evidence. So here, both Jeffree Star 
and Shane Dawson are both beating her lies about James Charles. And imagine this, like seeing those like two super powerful like men on YouTube. One who is famous for making documentaries and being extremely nervous and feeling a lot of pain. And then the other one who is very famous for being honest. And then they say that they have evidence. Like, of course, I would, I totally get it why she believed them. You know what I mean? The night before I did film, Jeffrey sent me what he claimed was an audio file from an alleged victim and told me to listen to the pain in their voice. The audio was clearly a small portion of a larger conversation. So here she's talking about an audio file that Jeffree Star showed to her where an alleged victim of James Charles is talking about how James did something very bad to him. And this audio file is very, very, very real. And the interesting thing is Blair White uploaded a video about Jeffree Star where Jeffree Star showed her the same audio file and I highly recommend that you watch that video by Blair White but yeah but now I'm gonna show you a clip from her video which I edited a little bit because I wanted to show you only the part where she's talking about the audio file okay let's take a look at it. he reached out to me via DMs on Twitter and the reason he reached out to me is because of this and please keep this in mind because I'm gonna come back to this later I typed out Jeffrey's first name in response to someone on Twitter a reply tweet not a main feed tweet saying I'm thinking about doing a video specifically about Jeffrey's involvement with Dobby Vanity because it's really shady. He then was in my DMs with a quickness to, in my opinion, put out a fire. He didn't want my video to be made, so he came in my DMs, requested a FaceTime. We most definitely FaceTimed. And basically, he manipulated me into not going forward with my video, said that a bunch of the things that were out there were fabricated, a lot of the receipts I planned on using were fabricated, was very convincing about it, and then a few days later, went on Chris Hansen, went back on all of that, and basically showed himself to lie to me. He said a lot of the things were fake, and then went back and said they were real on Chris Hansen, but again, however the conversation proceeded, it got to him asking me, so what's your opinion of James Charles? And keep in mind, a year ago, he called James Charles a predator and then refused to back it up with the receipts he promised he had. I told him my honest view, which is one that I was public with a year ago when it happened, and said, I felt like if you were going to call him a predator and promise that you had the receipts, you should have proven it and you should have provided those receipts and you shouldn't have tried to back out of it. I didn't feel that was right. He said, okay, I respect it, but do you want to know the truth? He then provided me with receipts of a voice memo from a YouTuber who was allegedly sexually molested by James Charles, and it's credible. It's a YouTuber. It, it's credible. It is not my place to out this YouTuber's name at all. So I'm in shock after being given this information by Jeffrey, and then Jeffrey proceeds to tell me, James will never attack me because I have this on him. I have shit on everyone. Which he has said publicly before. I have shit on everyone. Because I have dirt on everyone, and they know to keep their mouth shut. Wow, Jeffrey! You're such a dramatic guru! So imagine this. Jeffrey Star saw that she was thinking about making a video exposing Jeffrey Star and his friendship with Davey Vanity. And Jeffrey starts to try to like manipulate her into thinking that oh no 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 I, I, there's nothing like shady going on the little okay I guess you know I get it why he would try to like not make her do the video but what I find extremely snaky and disgusting is that he has to bring up James Charles all of a sudden he had nothing to do with this nothing it got to him asking me so what's your opinion of James Charles he then provided me with receipts of a voice memo from a YouTuber who was allegedly sexually molested by James Charles. But Jeffrey decided to ask her, hey, how do you like James Charles? And then he yeeted this audio file to her where this victim, like we don't know if this is a real victim or, or if this guy, or if this man is just making all of this up, like we don't know. Yeah, he just showed her this audio file. It looks like to me that Jeffrey Star, the dramatic guru, was trying to make Blair White make a video on James Charles instead of making a video on him. And I think this was like the first time they were talking ever. And he just showed her this clip just right away. Then imagine how many other people Jeffree Star has showed this audio clip to. And I think it's so freaking disgusting that Jeffree Star is using this story that someone told him, I guess. And he's just showing this to everyone. Like, okay, let's imagine that I was the one who told Jeffree Star this story. I would be freaking furious if I knew that he was just like showing everyone this story. Like, hey, listen to this. Listen to this. Who wanna listen? Like, are you being serious, Jeffree Star? I don't think that Jeffree Star is asking the victim, like, if he can show that random person the story of the victim. I don't think Jeffree Star is doing that. Like, hello, victim. Can I show Blair White your story? Hello, can I show Tati your story? I don't think Jeffree Star is doing that. You know what I mean? Like, oh, this is so... I, like, when I heard this, that that's that's the point that made me absolutely really dislike Jeffree Star. Like, oh, th this is extremely disgusting what you're doing, Jeffree Star. And if I should be honest, I don't really think that this story is real that the victim is saying. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, like, if Jeffree Star 
is just running around showing everyone. I mean, like, has he showed you yet? He has? Yes? Whoa, oh my god, like... I think that Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star knew exactly what they were doing. They wanted someone to make a video about James Charles to, like, destroy his career. And the thing is, they, don't want, they did not want to make the video because they knew the person that was gonna make the video was gonna get so, so, so much of hate. And they did not want to, like, be... They did not want to, like, risk their career. They wanted to, like, make documentaries, ha <laughs> That he was out of the country on the high floor of a hotel and I was afraid for him hurting himself. Shane texted me back and said that I should not be nervous about the 50th floor, that James Charles was a narcissist, and that he would never do that. Wow, Shane, you're such an empath. Oh my god, imagine this. Shane Dawson being a friend with like the biggest narcissist in the beauty community, but then calling a 19-year-old boy a narcissist. Wow, very empath moment of you, Shane. And the funny thing is, I think this is very true, because... Shane Dawson went to a podcast a few years ago where he was talking about narcissists and he said the same thing that she is saying right now. My whole thing with celebrities is sometimes why I don't buy it when a celebrity, especially one like Marilyn who's so glamorous, yeah. is because, and this sounds bad, this is whatever, but narcissists tend not to Oh, because they love right. themselves so much. Even if they're depressed and even if they're like damaged and this and that, they it's still think they're better than people and they yeah. still think wow. that they should be on the earth and they don't want to kill because they love their fame. Wow, Shane! Jesus Christ! You sure love like assuming people's disorders? Like, are you being serious? Like, <laughs> for example, when Shane was making the documentaries with Jake Paul, Shane was being like, ah, look at Jake Paul! He is breathing like a goddamn sociopath! Am I right? <laughs> like, Jesus Christ! And now, Shane is calling James Charles a narcissist. Come on, Shane! And like all of you know, Shane likes to flex on all of us that he is an empath! So he really likes to point at people and just call them names. For example, Jake Paul, you're a sociopath. James, you're a narcissist. Jeffrey, dramatic guru! Like, oh my god, Shane Dawson! And also, what bothers me so much is that he loves to call people names when it comes to, like, disorders, but then he has literally no idea what the term means! Like, oh my god, Shane, you're a freaking clown! Like, oh my god! And also, like, James Charles, he has never given me, at least, like, ne uh, uh, any, like, narcissistic wipes or any weird wipes. Like, James Charles seems like a pretty nice guy, in my opinion, at least, you know what I mean? Unlike you, Shane! Whoa, whoa, I almost broke my glass. Unlike you, Shane, you give me some freaking weird wipes. But your friend Jeffrey here, he gives have super duper months of narcissistic wipes from him. But you know, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not gonna say if someone is something. Ah, very tasty. Don't forget to drink your H2O too, my friend. <laughs> As a victim of abuse myself, I know how terrifying it is to think of facing public humiliation and legal proceedings. Okay, so here Tati is talking about like how much she um, feels for the victim that was allegedly um, victimized by James Charles. And the interesting thing about this part is that Shane Dawson went live on Instagram shortly after this video was uploaded and Shane Dawson was reacting to a part from her video and he was reacting to this part right here. And now let's take a look at Shane Dawson freaking losing his mind. I mean, being a complete empath um, live on Instagram. Let's take a look at that. I'm live because I, I can't even process. I need a drink of water. I fucking can't process this. This is insane. This is insane. This is insane. This woman is a fucking... Oh my god, oh my god, I'm gonna wait till as many people get in here as possible because I'm losing my mind. So how is it that so many editorial outlets knew that something was coming before I- had Because you message drama channels! Oh my god. Jesus Christ, Shane, this is not what empath of you, but okay, weird flex. And then before I did film, Jeffrey sent me what he claimed was an audio file from an alleged victim and told me to listen to the pain of her voice. The audio was clearly a small portion of oh my the God. conversation. It wasn't enough for me to contact the authorities. It was enough to scare me. This part is so interesting because 
um, here Tat is talking about the audio clip that Jeffree Star showed to her. And you can see how scared Shane is in his face because he knew that he messed up right there. Because he's definitely telling the truth because there are evidence that this audio file is real. Because like we saw in, like we saw in Blair White's video. And just I find it so interesting how scared he is right there. Well then why would you make a video on the matter claiming these allegations? Because she is a fucking I can't I can't I don't want to say mean things about people this is insane oh, 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 <clears throat> am I the only one who is noticing this I don't know if I'm going into too much of details here but to me it seems like he forgot for a second that he was live and he was just gonna tell say something very mean about her because she is a fucking I can't, I can't, I don't- Oh, I can't, I can't do it. Ooh, I'm a nervous boy. I'm such an empath. I cannot say mean things about people. Shut up, Shane. Like, you could literally see his mask slip away for a second, like, before. And then he was like, oh, God, no, 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 I cannot say mean things. Like, seriously, he is so freaking manipulative. I just, oh, I cannot stand this guy. Oh, my God. As a victim of abuse myself. Oh, my God. Terrified. You are so manipulative. No, you, Shane, like seriously, she was just talking from her heart, like talking about a very, very, very hard experience. Like I totally believe Tati right there. And Shane, he is just calling her manipulative. No, you, again, Shane, like all we know, like Shane, he loves nothing more than blaming his childhood, like bad childhood on things, like bad things that he has done. But when someone else is talking about their bad past, ah, disgusting, you are so manipulative. I am the only empath on earth, okay? Not you. Like, whoa, Shane, Jesus freaking Christ. Imagine often, like, talking about your bad childhood and then using your sensitivity to get away from problems and, like, criticism and then get angry at people that are talking about their very hard past. Like, oh my God. You're fake, you're fake crying. You are fake crying. You are fake crying. That is not real. Oh my God. Oh, really, Shane? Hmm, very interesting. So you are saying that she is fake crying. Okay, okay. But <laughs> to all of you at home, yes, you, do you want to know how Shane Dawson was behaving in the trailer that he made for his beauty documentary series? Okay, take a look at this. Burn the sash and smash the teal. Okay, so right here we have Shane Dawson sitting at home and he is watching Tati's video that she made one year ago. And in that video, like most of you know, Tati was talking about how James Charles has gotten pretty entitled and also that he has done bad things to straight men. And there was nothing in that video that was like really sad, to be honest, like nothing to cry about. But right here we have Shane Dawson watching that video and literally freaking crying uh, wow shane you're such an empath like you can see we get two very big tears flowing down like imagine how many takes it took for them to get this perfect shot of shane crying i would not be surprised if like Shane and his camera went middle and his cameraman were like filming this for like one hour like the cameraman like okay Shane cry now and then Shane like okay wait okay yes was this good no 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 this was not good okay I want two very good tears ah yes okay was this good no no you have to be more sad okay whoa, whoa! Mm. I almost died. <laughs> ah, I fell on the goddamn floor, but yes, I'm fine. You don't have to um, call nine one one, okay? I'm not dead. So yeah, this is how I could imagine this went down with Shane Dawson and his and his empath tears. But what I find very funny is that Shane is calling Tati manipulative when she is crying while she's talking about her very traumatizing story. But then here we have Shane literally crying over a freaking drama video that is not even sad. Wow, that's very sad if you ask me. I should cry now. <laughs> oh. 
Yes, hello. And also what I find very interesting is that in Shane Dawson's statement or like long essay that he wrote like few days ago before he was like calling Tati manipulative, he said this. Looking back, I still believe Tati a lot of what she said and I believe she felt it was what she needed to do at the time. So he's talking about that he believed Tati and she thought it was kind of necessary for her to make that video. And now when she's making a video on him, he is very angry. <laughs> this thing reminds me so much of this meme with a dinosaur when it's like bamboozling and the dinosaur is like <laughs> getting bamboozled. So in Shane's case, it's like when someone makes a drama video on someone else, Shane is like <laughs> But then someone made a drama video on you And also in Shane Dawson's trailer that he made for the beauty world with Jeffree Star He's also watching that James Terrell sub count like going down like crazy and Shane is like <gasps> super nervous and scared and he feels so bad for James Charles because he's an empath but then there are evidences that, that Shane Dawson has been talking terribly about Shane, Char Shane Charles <laughs> about James Charles behind closed doors, like before the series started. Free and I remember Shane Dawson called and he was going off about James Charles and something and telling like just like cursing James out and I was just like kind of took taken back because I've never seen Shane Dawson like that and he was just going in on James. And here's a text message between Jeffrey Star and James Charles. And Jeffrey said this. Tati and Shane and few others told me everything that you've said about me over the last six months. I'm heartbroken, disgusted, and so sad to hear everything, but shockingly not surprised. I've only been a great friend to you and never said anything bad about you behind the scenes, which is obviously not the case for you. And then James Charles replied, let's definitely talk. I do not talk about you behind your back and have not talked to Shane literally at all in the last six months. Wow, Shane. And then here he is being super duper sad about James Charles losing subscribers. Like, oh my god, you're so manipulative, Shane. And you said that the beauty gurus were two-faced. Well, you are, Shane. This just sounds like a description of you. Shane doesn't disgust him, am I right? <laughs> okay, let's keep going, everyone, with this goddamn video. It's already too long. I'm trying to fix the camera a little bit. Or my phone, actually. It's not a camera. I'm not that rich. And I asked him to not include the drama in the series. He only texted me after the trailer was live with an audio message telling me to not worry about it. The drama was only going to be one episode. So Tati did not want Shane um, to include the drama in the series or in the trailer. But of course Shane Dawson did not listen to her because he really wanted to um, watch her video that she made one year ago and then shed two very fat tears down his cheeks. <laughs> And also what is very interesting is that Cassie MUA is a good friend with James Charles and under one of her YouTube videos she replied to a comment and she said this I find it quite a comedy that Shane regrets putting the drama in the trailer more than anything in the world Funny, he didn't seem to have any morals when he privately spoke to them before blasting it for millions and millions of people to speculate when James kindly asked him not to post that trailer Even James Charles asked Shane to not post the trailer and like not include the drama in the series It would reopen wounds that he was still trying to heal from Oh yeah, I remember that, I was right there when he got the text from Shane saying he was still gonna post it And he did, T! What is so interesting is that in the statement Shane was like Did I need that kind of drama to make good series? No! But yet he did not like respect their wishes to not put this drama in the trailer. He just ignored it. So Shane is just looking like a huge freaking liar right here. Oh my god, he's such this is this guy is such a clown. Oh my god. And shortly after he went live, he decided to yell at us on Twitter. This is a freaking lie and I'm losing my mind! Hey everyone, so now a week has passed since I filmed the previous part of this video. And the reason why a week has passed is because oh, now comes the part of this video where we are going to take a look at Shane Dawson's old offensive and black jokes. And I'm just going to be honest, I'm very, 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 very nervous to take a look at those jokes because I'm not a very big fan of black and offensive jokes because they actually hurt me a lot of the times. So, uh, yeah. 
And uh, and because I'm so sensitive for jokes like that, I was actually thinking if I should actually have this part in this video. I was being like, wait, should I maybe just like not have this part in this video? Or yeah, should I just throw it out? But then I thought to myself, no. Shane Dawson, he has done so many disgusting things in his past and he has gotten away with it for, gotten away with it for so many years. And even one time, like I told you earlier, it actually made me freaking cry one time because the jokes that he made were so extremely disturbing and disgusting. And now I feel like I want to call him out on his disgusting jokes because he just deserves it, in my opinion. Especially, maybe it's maybe I'm just like this because he actually hurt me like five years ago. But yeah, I feel like I want to call him out. And also know that myself, five years ago, would be very proud of me right now to call him out. You know what I mean? <sighs> I'm actually getting emotional. <sighs> but yeah, we just... Five, five years ago, like, I would never think that I would be sitting here in front of a camera, or my phone actually, speaking in, like, not in my native language, and then roasting Shane Dawson, like, I would never think that five years ago that that would ever happen to me, you know what I mean? Because five years ago, I was just a shy, like, commenter, like, watching videos and not doing anything else. So now I'm standing up for myself, oh, that's why I'm doing this. I know this looks so dramatic, but I actually feel like this. I know it's, yeah, like I said, dramatic, but you know, this is how I feel. So yeah, so now we're gonna take a look at racist jokes, jokes, including children in a very disturbing way, and then... <sighs> jokes about animals in a very disturbing way. Yes, and I understand if you don't want to watch this part of this video, I totally get it. So you can skip to this time right here, where I'm ending this video and I'm done with all of the jokes, yes. But now, let's start with the racist jokes. <laughs> yes, and also I hope you don't mind that I grabbed myself some um, sparkling water and some snack. This is um, dry fish. What I find very interesting is that Jane Dawson said in his apology video that he feels very bad over normalizing the n-word and, and, and normalizing the blackface. I'm sorry that I added to the normalization of blackface or the normalization of saying the n-word. You did way more than just normalizing the n-word and normalizing blackface. You were just freaking racist in my opinion. Okay, now let's take a look at the first funny scats that Shane Dawson made. Yes. This pie is so good, monkey woman. My name is not monkey woman. I know that. It's a nickname. Like, hotty? Monkey woman. Little number? Big monkey woman. Haven't you ever had a nickname before? Well, you folks did call me nigga bitch. <gasps> you have two nicknames? Now you're just bragging, nigga bitch. Shane, there is no way that you did not know that this sketch right here is extremely racist. I mean, the punchline is just racism. He is this like blonde princess or whatever, and he's talking to this waitress, I guess, and he is calling her very, very, very racist things. And then the waitress says like, oh, you know, there, people used to call me something way worse. And then Shane is like, <gasps> and this is the punchline, like music stops. Before, well, you folks did call me nigga bitch. <gasps> and now the audience watching this, the scats are like, oh my god, the, the blonde woman, she's probably gonna be like, this is horrible. But the joke is, he's like, you have two nicknames. You have two nicknames? Now you're just bragging, nigga bitch. And then uh, the audience like, ha ha ha, or something, you know, like the punchline is that this blonde woman was like, everyone expected her to be like, oh, that's horrible because the music like stopped. When she was like, oh, you know, like, and then she was, yeah, then she was just more racist. That's the, that's the joke in this in this sketch. I, oh, this is so ridiculous. Like, I don't really see the funny in the sketch. I don't see the funny. I'm super sorry, Shane, but oh my god, like sketches like this actually just annoy me because the funny is is racism in the sketch. Oh my god. So the next clip that we are about to see. It's like from a vlog or something where Shane and his ex-girlfriend are baking a cake or something like this. So, I remind you, no jokes are like planned in this clip. You know what I mean? It's like a vlog. And uh, what Shane says right now is extremely just disgusting. Now, let's take a look at it. Caleb, this is going to be the nastiest cum face thing ever. Almost as nasty as the black girl's hair on the back of the box. <laughs> This woman, she's talking about that she finds something disgusting. I don't, I don't really want to know what she's talking about. But the first thing that comes in Shane Dawson's mind when he sees this picture of this girl just doing some baking stuff behind the packets of 
So baking powder or whatever is that her hair is disgusting and he decides to say that as a co as a, some comedy. Super funny Shane. This was not planned. This was not some like sketch that he was doing with his black friend so he can't be racist. It's fine. It was in comedy and my black friend was there. And he's just baking in a vlog and the first thing that comes in mind when he sees this like small girl. It's just a small girl of color is that her hair is disgusting. Come on, Shane! Oh my god, and again, this is just a girl behind the baking packets, like... <sighs> okay, so, the next clip that we're about to see is also very racist, and now a little story be before we watch this clip. So, um, I saw this clip that we're about to see before the one where Shane is talking about this little girl behind this baking packets. And first, when I saw this clip that we're about to see, I did not really get it, to be honest. I was like, what, what? But then, after I saw the clip where he's talking about this girl behind the baking packets, I realized how freaking racist this clip that we're about to see is. <laughs> Welcome to all my little girls and little boys and little whatever the fuck you're supposed to be. Ah uh, yes, Shane, of course. You were just very ignorant back in the day and you had no idea that you were making racist jokes. <laughs> it's no way that it did not know that he's been extremely racist right here. And like I said earlier, I did not really get this sketch at first until I saw the one where he's talking bad about a little girl's hair that, that's behind, that's like a picture behind... <gasps> a box of baking stuff. So in this sketch we have this <laughs> little girl <laughs> or a, a grown man with a wig, like straight hair wig, then a grown man with just like a short hair wig that is like straight hair, and then he has this curly hair wig. And because this boy has curly hair, Shane or whatever this character is called has no idea what he is. And little whatever the fuck you supposed to be. Again, I I don't see the funny about this. And also another thing that I find kind of interesting is that, like, Shane Dawson sure loved attacking other people's hair. Imagine the hair! Imagine attacking other people's hair! <laughs> Jesus Christ, but yeah, but at the same time, this freaking guy, he doesn't even like to take baths. Like, being dirty is like his personality trait. Hey, what's up, you guys? Yes, we are here once again, unshowered, and uh, unable to give a fuck about hygiene. I haven't brushed my teeth in four days. Imagine not taking freaking baths. Unshowered. And be dirty and then attacking other people's hair. <laughs> Very similar to Mr. Onion, Shane Dawson. But like some of you know, <laughs> Mr. Onion or Onision, he is the king of being greasy and not showering himself. But then... <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm, la I'm laughing because this is so freaking stupid, but basically, Mr. Onion, aka the greasiest man on this goddamn planet, he then made a video teaching black women <laughs> how to take care of their hair and how to wash it. Well, this frizzy crap, I say frizzy crap because it just comes to mind, so that doesn't smell like dead rats, unlike probably haven't washed my hair in four years, girl, already. Yes, the greasiest man on this planet that doesn't like to take baths, he did that. <laughs> and yeah, looks like you have something in, in common with M Mr. Onion, Shane. Yeah, attacking people's hair, but then being extremely greasy yourself. <laughs> like all of you remember, Shane Dawson has been talking about in his apology videos that he just had no idea that he was racist. Like, hmm, oh my god, I just did not know the history, blah, 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 blah. He has been like making excuses that he just didn't know and he knew that deep inside that he is not racist. So like making the jokes was completely okay. But literally in the next clip that we're about to see, he literally admits that he is racist. Not to be overly racist, yeah. as I always am, but you guys are both dressed very white today. <laughs> yes. So basically, in my opinion, Shane Dawson is a freaking liar because I'm pretty sure that that, blah, that Shane Dawson knew very well that he was being very racist, but he just thought being racist was such a fun personality trait. Like, oh, look how racist I am. <laughs> I'm like, oh, so annoying. Jesus freaking Christ. Like, yeah. And then Shane Dawson made a video with James Charles. Yes. 
where he's wearing this goddamn t-shirt with a picture of this like Shane Nene character or whatever. Like what? It looks like Shane Dawson is flexing on us like, oh, look at my, look at my goddamn character that I made. <laughs> like he's, he's wearing this t-shirt in 2018. And this character right here has been very, very, very racist in his videos. Yes. I'm not joking, he's flexing on us like, ah, look at this racist character. <laughs> like, freaking ridiculous that he's still showing us this freaking character. <coughs> My dry fish is over. Yeah. Mmm, sparkling water. Ah. But yeah, now we are done taking a look at the racist jokes that Shin Dawson used to make. And don't get me wrong, like, there are like, way, 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 way more of racist jokes out there from Shane. But the thing is, if I react to all of them, this video is gonna be like 10 hours, so yeah. But now comes the part that is the most disturbing in this video. And this is the part that I'm also most nervous for. Yes, now we are gonna take a look at the clips where Shane Dawson is doing sexual things with children and also making them act a character in his videos that is extremely sexual yep but before we take a look at the clips take a look at a part from his book that he wrote in 2015 called i hate my selfie and here he is describing himself how he looked like when he was a child let's see how he describes himself the worst trait that i had was something no boy wants i had a pretty face no i don't want this to sound cocky i really did have a beautiful face it was plump and round in all right places. My cheekbones were high and sat perfectly under my cold bottle glasses, creating a cute little crease when I smiled. My lips were soft and shiny. My eyelashes were literally three inches long and made audible flapping sounds when I blinked. I'm still shocked and slightly offended that I was never molested. Is this supposed to be funny? Because I find absolutely nothing funny about writing something like this. And the thing is, I don't care if something like this happened to you, Shane. You don't have the right to make disgusting, disturbing jokes like that in your book. And the thing is, when he wrote this part in his book, he had not like come forward and told everyone that he had a traumatizing childhood. Which makes this like 10 times worse in my opinion, that he's writing something like that in his book. I will never understand how Shane Dawson thought it was okay for him to write something like that in his book. And he was, was he trying to be funny? I, I, re I literally don't know why he wrote this in his book. Seriously, going through something like this is the worst thing that could ever happen to any child. And it actually makes me mad that he's just joking, uh, joking about this. Like, ha ha ha, it's not funny, Shane. Literally, even though, again, even though you have been through something like this, it's still not funny. It's never funny to joke, some, to joke about something like that. Seriously, I just, uh, I don't even know what to say now. I'm just so... I'm actually angry and offended that he, he that he dared to write something like that in his book. Disgusting, seriously. I, oh, like, <clears throat> I'm actually mad now. Oh, Jesus Christ. So, we're gonna take a look at Shane Dawson's weird family moments with his 12-year-old cousin. And like, most of you remember, Shane was talking about that. Oh, I'm, I'm so, it's so ridiculous. I was filming like weird family moments and I posted it on the internet. And then he also said that, oh, I hated how I was like talking about the birds and the bees to my 12-year-old cousin. Yeah. And now we're gonna take a look at the, the bird and the bees clip and according to Shane in his apology video this was just nothing you know he was just talking about the birds and the bees like oh that's that's like that's very important that you do that to kids that are turning teenagers very important that you that, that, that they learn about things like that but like I said earlier this is way more disgusting than just talking about the birds and the bees this is just this is just very predatory in my opinion okay now let's take a look at this clip where Shane Dawson is talking about the birds and the bees. We want to know. We have a question. What is it? Very important question. And you don't need to feel shy about it. No, <laughs> really? <laughs> it's natural. It's natural. Is there anybody around? No? Oh, uh, like, this is so freaking creepy already. And this, this clip isn't even over. And also the way Shane Dawson is being like, is anyone around? Which makes this like way, way, way more creepy and disgusting. Imagine him in his 20s and also his girlfriend with him talking like this to a 12 year old 12 year old girl yeah so we want to talk to you we want to explain what sex is to you we did get yeah. like oh, oh where's the other peep we should probably oh yeah we'll just use we'll use peeps okay well one peep and then we'll use you oh okay so i'll just pretend like that's you know i mean that works 
Let's see what happens. See, oh. <laughs> And then, and then you're so happy when you're an adult. I can't believe I'm endorsing this. <laughs> <laughs> Look what you've turned me into. This is not normal at all that Shane doesn't even get the idea to ask her this. Like, this is so freaking disgusting. And also, I hate it how, like, Shane Dawson is pushing his girlfriend to be extremely uh, in, uh, inappropriate to his 12-year-old cousin. Like you, you, like, you could hear the girlfriend say, look what you have turned me into. <laughs> <laughs> look what you've turned me into. So it looks like Shane Dawson really, really, really likes pushing people to do things that they don't really want to do or would not do otherwise. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, so, Lucy, does that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> but Lucy, listen, you should be in love and you should preferably be married and hopefully not have any kids. Okay. And you should definitely be over the age of like 24, 25. And you should put a ring on it. And you should put a ring on it. Ring on it. No, I'm kidding. No, you don't know what that is. You shouldn't know what that is. Okay. Now, are you on your period right now? What? I'm trying to get answers. <laughs> How old are you? I'm you anything. So <laughs> How old are you? I'm 12. She's this period, feels very right? no, Are you? No, you're not on your period? You bleed. No. No, listen. You have a boyfriend, right? Yeah. Now, what did I tell you? When he says, can I put it in, you say. No. Good. High five, girlfriend. Now, when he now when he says, what about just in your mouth? You say. No. No. You say, I bite. <laughs> <laughs> and then he starts to ask her very, very, very inappropriate and disturbing questions. And the thing is, you are not educating her in any way right here, Shane. You are being extremely creepy and disgusting, seriously. And the thing is, like, Shane, he is this, like, type of creepy uncle that you should keep away from your freaking kids, you know what I mean? Like, this is not normal to talk like this to your 12-year-old cousin. Like, so freaking disgusting. And like I said, this is not the birds and the bees talk. It just seems like you're trying to get this information, like, from her just for this video or just because you want to know it for some weird, disgusting reasons. Just saying. Oh, I hate this clip so much. I find it so disturbing. But yeah, now you see how Shane Dawson was treating his 12-year-old cousin. And this is not just... And this is not only a one-time thing. Like, she has often appeared in his videos and, like, 99% of the times... She was doing something sexual, which is very freaking disturbing. Good job, Lucy! But next time, shake your titties more. And you, take off the jacket and show more. Yeah, bitch. I'm gonna give birth to my car so that I can throw my baby out the window. My favorite part of Finding Nemo was when his mom died. That shit was funny as fuck. My favorite flavor of Popsicle is dick. Michael Jackson didn't molest me. I molested his fine ass. I really know what that means. It means you're not funny anymore, fat. What? Yeah, Smosh is so much better than you. And so much hotter. Yeah, I'd rather fuck Lucas Crookshank than fuck you. I okay, okay, I get it. Yes, very, very, very disturbing. And what annoys me so, so, so freaking much is that, okay, so basically, he is making the sketches, so he, like, is writing the script or whatever, and he, like, this is his idea, most of all. And the annoying thing is, he always makes his own character, or like himself, he is always like the normal one in the videos. And then everyone else are always like crazy, and very often it's like children that are saying something crazy to him, and he is always like, okay, I get it, okay, wow, stop it, wow, 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 like he, ugh. For example, in that clip that we just watched, he is the, like, normal guy. He's like, he doesn't get it why these children are saying this to him, you know what I mean? Even though he made the sketch and and he was, like, writing down, like, <laughs> the children are supposed to say this to me. And I'm, like, sitting there being like, oh, well, or, like, you, do you know what I mean? I think so, yeah. But, yeah. So, now we are done taking a look at all of the clips where Shane Dawson has been um, extremely disgusting to his 12-year-old cousin. And the thing is, I think, like... The clips that we just watched get like 10, 10 times worse after knowing that Shane Dawson, like he's so weird when it comes to kids. And the thing is like always when he's talking about children or like when there's a kid present, he always start to, t starts to talk about something sexual. And it's so, so, so weird to me. So in the next clip, Shane Dawson is talking about when he met um, Leah Mari Johnson, which is very well known from the React series. And he's just talking about like when he met her for the first time. And she was very young when he first met her. And of course, this had to turn into something very sexual and it's very disturbing. So yeah, let's Just because I've noticed that she was a kid. Like I saw her at Yogurt Land at like midnight queen and then we ate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the she's, yogurt, she's, she's yogurt. real, she loves that yogurt of topping three toppings. Isn't it crazy I knew her when she was literally six? 
Did Wait, you so really? Six? Actually, actually, my six? first acting thing ever was before I was even a YouTuber was like some YouTube video with the Fine Brothers. Mm. I was just an actor on Craigslist, and she was there, and she was like six, and she sat on my lap. What? Fuck good. Hit <laughs> 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 it! Oh. I ruined her. Absolutely freaking horrible. Like it's not normal that this is the first thing that comes into your mind when you're talking about. A literal child. And what bothers me so very much too is that the people on the podcast, they don't say anything. They just like, ha ha ha, slap their knees like, and laugh at this. There's nothing funny at this. And even though this was like five years ago, and the thing is, five years ago is not a long freaking time. And humor like this was not okay five years ago. But I don't get it why he could, why he got away with it so much. Like saying things like that, that are just horrible and disgusting. And this gets even worse after you know um, what Leah's life has turned into. Jay Obrey uh, made a very good video talking about this, and now I want to show you just a very small clip from his video so you can see how Leah's life has basically just turned upside down. Promising online career underway, Leah was given a sufficient outlet to display her talents, signing to Capitol Records in 2016 and releasing her first single, DNA, later that year. Like this chick was named one of the top 10 biggest stars of 2014 by Adweek and even interviewed the President of the United States in 2016. Even if she isn't as active on YouTube now, she was once a big deal. So big, in fact, that there's a strangely perverse subreddit dedicated to her. Not like a normal, typical fan page. It's got a creepier, darker tone than you'd expect. With what I would presume to be older men drooling over photos that aren't even always particularly suggestive. Like seriously, hashtag nippy, Leah in her undies, an old one but her boobs look amazing here, Leah see through nipple at 18, why, why would you say that? Some of these were taken before she was even an adult and yet you still get all of these strangers fetishizing her on the internet. It's disgusting. And I can only imagine this type of ogling does little to assist in already declining mental state. Because as the years went on, Leah became less and less like herself and went live on Instagram. Nothing too out of the ordinary there. It's something her followers have grown pretty accustomed to. Only this time, a peculiar figure happened to crash the scene through an interaction so perturbing you have to see for yourself. I'm not ready to go fucking underground. I'm not ready to die. This is the shit. This is the shit. I'm ready for my song. Leah is shown rambling into the camera before a gravelly voice out of frame asks if she's familiar with Christina Perry's A Thousand Years. He then goes on to play the song before grabbing and presumably making out with Leah, who is very clearly not sober. The chat becomes increasingly more alarmed the longer they kiss, and as Leah turns back to face the camera, the man suddenly becomes alarmed himself. I think I need... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're there. No one can save me, though. Where are you at? Live. <laughs> Where are you at? Are you on Instagram? Totally. <laughs> that would be bad. Well, what is this? The live finally shuts off, leaving every last viewer with an uneasy feeling in their stomach. Who the f was that guy? You can't really see the dude who grabs her, though you can definitely still make out both a silhouette and a voice strikingly similar to that of Stephen Weatherby, a San Diego photographer and a music producer who has worked with Leah since 2012. You know, when she was 15, they collab- it's so sad to see this because it seemed like she had such a bright future in front of her, but then something like this had to happen, and it's horrible. And Shane Dawson even had a small part in why it happened because he was talking like that about her. And imagine someone that's supposed to be your friend is just talking like this about you on a podcast in front of like so many audience. It's like it's so bad for a mental health to, to hear something like this. So like I mentioned earlier, when it comes to kids, Shane Dawson is so weird and creepy about it. For example, um, here Shane Dawson is working on a spoof for the final destination and he uploaded a picture of himself with one of the other actors in this booth on Facebook and the other actor was just a child and this is the caption that he wrote snapshot from the set of the final destination spoof I freaking love this kid so much I just want to squeeze him yes I'm a pedophile. Again, why is the first thing that comes in Shane Dawson's mind something sexual when it comes to children? It's so alarming and creepy to me. And now I just want to show you a few clips and I'm not going to say anything about them. But yeah, I just want to play all of them because I don't want to talk too much so this video won't be like five hours. But yeah, now here are some clips that are disturbing, of course. I let you play with Barbies and then we'd bake cookies. If I Justine wasn't watching, I would rape all of you. Oh, yeah. I want all those shirts on my bedroom floor instead of on your underage bodies. 
<laughs> okay, so please explain what you want me to do. Um, I want him to chew that gum and then give it to me. In your mouth? Yeah. All right, let's do it. <laughs> yes, I'm going to jail. Oh, I love you too. Oh, I love you too. Now shut up and twerk. Maybe she can't hear us. Give it. Okay, okay. Twerk for us. <laughs> Oh, Here we go. She's moving front of us. Yeah! Good yeah. girl! <laughs> yeah. That's This clip that we just watched is the one that started this whole thing that people started to realize that Shane Dawson wasn't as big of an empath like we all thought and people started to now dig more into his old content and they just found ton like endless of videos of him being racist, him sexualizing kids and also sexualizing animals also. But this clip made so many people just furious and even the mom of Willow and also her brother even spoke out on Twitter talking about how angry they were at Shane Dawson for doing something like that to her. Like, I totally get it. Imagine seeing some freaking man that is famous on the internet, like, doing something like this to your daughter or to your sister. Now we're done taking a look at um, the clips where he is talking like that about kids. But this is not over. Now we're going to take a look at the clips where he is talking in a sexual way again about animals which is just as freaking disturbing and this clip that we're about to see is very telling in a way because it it shows how similarly Shane Dawson views animals and children Drew I told Drew to fuck my dog and Drew was like pretending to hump him and I was like maybe just fuck him. Just it's been a minute. Bestiality? Um, so I guess I could see that. But like, if another dog was fucking my dog, well, I guess I think that was cute. I don't know. I if I like... had a child, which is the same as a dog to me, um, well, I guess when they're a baby, you don't want to picture somebody fucking them. No, someone did that though. Did you hear that what? news story? Some guy killed a baby because he. This clip makes me so angry, like for real. First of all, he's talking about um, doing something very disgusting to his dog. And he asks his, his friend Drew or whatever to do it. And then he like very realistically says maybe you should do it. But then all of a sudden he brings up a child. And he says children are just like dogs. He was just talking about doing something extremely illegal and inappropriate to a dog. And then like in the same sentence almost he brings up a child. And talks about how similar they are. Imagine just shortly after talking about doing something inappropriate with a dog. Like, this was not, like, two, like, different situations, if it makes sense. Like, where he's talking about doing it with an animal and then, like, saying they're similar. No, 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 no! He said those things almost in the same sentence. <sighs> like, I, I, I don't know. There's, I think there's, so, there's something wrong with a person that talks like this. This is not only a black or offensive humor. This is something way, way, way worse than that, in my opinion. <sighs> yeah. And then, now I'm gonna show you some clips of Shane Dawson talking... Very inappropriately in about about animals. The things I've done to my poor animals, they have mm. been terrible things. I used to... Oh, no. I don't know if you want to go there, Shane. What'd you do? <laughs> One time, I laid my cat down on her back. Are you going to get arrested for this? I don't... I don't know. No. Think about it. Mm. I don't think so. Okay, go ahead. I didn't penetrate. <laughs> I laid the cat down on her back, I and then I, I, I moved her little chicken legs, like you know, spread open or whatever. And I was like, if I just like hump, but like on her tummy, like that's not weird, like whatever. And then I humped and I humped and I humped and I kept going, kept going, and I came all over the cat. No, you did not. It was like my first sexual experience. No I was also way. like 19, <laughs> so it's like, you know. Wait a minute. Wait a second, did you just say you came on a cat? <laughs> Guys, I think I have to put money in the meter. Yeah, right? I'm like super overwhelmed right now. How awesome. Oh, a dog <laughs> and uh, a sad little girl who just got raped by a happy monkey. And uh, yeah. Oh yeah, daddy likes what? <laughs> What's up, Miley? Yes, I named my dog Miley. Let me <laughs> let me explain why. Starters, Miley Cyrus is a bitch, right? Female dog, bitch, get it? The other thing is, me and Miley have this weird relationship. Like, I don't hate her, but I just love to pick on. Ooh, Miley keeps putting her head in my crotch. Guess she smells something tasty. What's up, Miley? Say hi. I want you guys to film at your pet. Film your pet saying hi to Miley. That'll be funny. Um, I'll show Miley those, and I will masturbate to those because I'm into that kind of stuff. You wanna see me and Miley make out? Right here, Shane Dawson is talking about that he named his dog Miley after the singer Miley Cyrus. And the thing is, 
Miley Cyrus was only 17 years old when he was saying that about her. Imagine talking like that about a singer that is 17 years old that is starring in a TV show that is like made for teenagers. And Shane Dawson was like 20 year old something man talking like that about a freaking like girl that is just playing in a TV show. That is not even made for him. He's 20 something man. And then this gets even worse and he starts to do something very inappropriate to this poppy, like a small poppy. And then he asks his fans to send him pictures of their pets. And then he said this. And I will masturbate to those. Cause I'm into that kind of stuff. And to be honest, it didn't sound much of a joke, if I should be very honest. And also, like after seeing all of those videos of him actually making out with animals, like, I don't even know if he's actually joking. And like I said before, this is not only like a black humor or offensive humor. This is something way more disturbing than that. And I don't think any sane person would, call, would, would do something like that or come up with jokes like this. This is not normal. Now we have taken a look at some clips of Shane Dawson being extremely disturbing and inappropriate and sexual around children. And all of the clips that we took a look at are like six, seven years old. So it was a time where he was making like offensive content and he has changed his content a lot. But one thing has not changed. He still likes to have children in his videos. In the next clips that we're about to see, Shane Dawson decided to adopt a small boy and pretend to be his dad. And the thing is, I find it so weird how often Shane Dawson is like adopting a small child or like having children in his videos, especially because how he acted around kids in his past. I find it like extra weird why he likes to have kids so much in his videos now because no other YouTuber is doing that. Like I've never seen other YouTuber like adopting a child just for a video. I think it's so weird. But in the videos he likes to hug him a lot, hold his hands, but you know, I'm not gonna say anything about that. I mean like parents do that to kids. But here are some clips that I was kind of like, you know, okay. Do Shane from your YouTube son. <laughs> What did your hat say? I've been good. Oh, Don't yeah, that it. would be a lie. Oh, because you're bad? Ew. No, I'm crazy. Wait, I don't know. Is he a bad boy? Really? I don't know. Okay. Ew, stop! <laughs> <laughs> Shane, there is nothing EU about this question that he was asking him. Oh, because you're bad? You stop! This small boy had a hat that said, I've been good. And Garth asked him, have you been good? And the kid said, no. And he said, oh, have you been bad? And he was just asking him as like, oh, have you been a bad boy? Have you like skipped doing your homework? Like that kind of bad boy that's like, hey, I'm not going to school today. I'm going to pretend to be sick. And my mom will let me stay at home and I will watch cartoons. <laughs> like that kind of bad boy. Like, this is how kids think about bad boys. But Shane Dawson responds with EW. Wait, I don't know. Is he a bad boy? Really? I don't know. Okay. EW, stop! Again, Shane, there's nothing EW about this question. The only EW in the scene is your freaking brain. That the first thing that comes to your mind when you ask him, have you been bad, is something, again, sexual. Being a bad boy, it doesn't always have to be, like, something like... Like, spicy you all, you know what I mean? I don't want to say this word, you know what I mean? I will say spicy all from now on, yeah. But being a bad boy does not have to be spicy all. Especially when you're with kids. I mean, like, if you'd be alone in the bedroom with your boyfriend, then I mean bad would probably be something spicy. But not when it comes to a kid, Shane. So your old mommy is coming over right now to show us her baby. Oh, oh, okay, so the little boy's old mother is coming over. <laughs> Sounds fun. I was with mommy before I was with daddy. Wait a second, she looks very familiar. I'll just pretend like that's, you know. I mean, it works. Let's <laughs> see if this happens. See, oh. <laughs> ah! What? No, 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 not her! So triggered. That looks so real. This is what our lives could have been. Hi, you could have been <laughs> my son! <laughs> this is our son. Well, your stepmommy, because I have another oh, daddy. Sure. It's confusing. Yeah. And we're modern family. Hug! Welcome to the modern family! Can I punch you? <laughs> You can't punch it. Really? No. Do you want to punch it together? No. Both of you, Shane and that woman, stay away. Stay away from that boy. Disgusting. Oh. Oh. So it's extra disgusting to see both of them with that small child, especially after this clip. <laughs> So here Shane Dawson and his friends and the son are making gingerbread houses. 
Looks good. Merry Christmas. Oh. Let's make it right this time. Yeah. We're done. If you want to make it right, look no further oh than... Oh my god. <laughs> And none of them really knows how to make a gingerbread bre bread house. So it's a big mess. And Shane does and decides to say this. <laughs> First when I saw this, I had no idea what that word meant. So I decided to Google it. And oh my god, I regret Googling this goddamn word because this is very, very, very disturbing word that you just said. And I highly recommend that you don't Google what this means because you will be disgusted. And the thing is, like you can see, it was like written on the screen. I did not put this in. I did not put the letters on the screen. I did not do that. Shane did when he was editing this video. So basically, they were just talking, and then he said this funny joke. That was like chocolate. And he decided to write it in letters. So he wanted the audience to like notice this. I said this. Look, I said this word. You know what I mean? So it seems like it's very funny to Shane that he's saying that in front of a kid. And also another thing. They're just making gingerbread houses. Why does everything have to be spicual that he gets in his head? Everything. He's just making gingerbread houses. There's nothing spicual going on. But his brain just, just is always thinking about something like that. It's so disgusting, especially that he is with his son next to him. Okay, it's just gross. gross. I can say truffle butter. He what? doesn't know what it means. What does it mean? What do you mean? Truffle butter. Dad's leaving. <laughs> Shane said that he's leaving. What a comedic genius! <laughs> I'm sure the whole family is laughing watching this video. Uh oh, look at that. It's my book. I hate my selfie. Available now. You could sign it for your son. Oh, I guess I could. <laughs> to my son. Just put to Chris. <laughs> and right here, Shane Dawson is giving the boy the book where he wrote disgusting things about himself as a child. Yes, and the thing is, I did not watch all of the videos where he was with his child, the newest videos. And you know, I just found these few clips that I found kind of like weird, you know what I mean? Like, ugh. but you know, I, I'm not just, I just wanted to show this to you and you can make your own opinion about this whole thing. I'm not going to say anything more, but yeah, it's kind of like weird the way he is acting. <sighs> So now we're gonna take a look at, okay, before I keep going, I know this is gonna be a big bad English moment for me, but I'll try to explain to all of yes as well as I can, yes. But now I want to take a look at like why Shane Dawson can't take criticism and also like how he reacts when people are trying to criticize him over his very offensive, disgusting jokes. It seems like Shane Dawson here was raised in an environment where he can he could literally get away with anything. He could, he could say whatever he wanted, he could behave in a way he wanted and no one would say anything. For example, this weird family moment that Shane Dawson was talking about <laughs> he could literally do whatever he wanted with his 12 year old cousin and no one said anything So it seems like the adults in his family did not really say anything when they saw something inappropriate going on Or sadly it was very normalized in his household, which is very freaking creepy For example, this old Meagle clip where Shane Dawson is sitting with his own mother and a fan of Shane Dawson pops up and they are like talking to her and she is of course panicking because this is just a teenager, you know what I mean? She's like panicking over seeing her favorite YouTuber. And what does Shane Dawson do? He starts to ask her to twerk for him right in front of his mother. Imagine that. And she is completely okay with that, that Shane Dawson is asking this teenager. Like this was, this was obviously a girl that was like very, very, very young. And the mom didn't see anything wrong with it. I love you too. Can you twerk for us? I know twerking is insane. Oh, I love you too. Oh, I love you too. Now shut up and twerk. And when that girl started to twerk, the mom said this. Yeah. 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 To me, this is absolutely not okay. And imagine Shane Dawson having his mother that probably, or I mean like, I'm, I'm just assuming, okay, did not tell, say anything when he was behaving in a bad way and he was just raised with her being like, yes, very good, like always be like, yeah, never scolding him when he did something bad. Of course a kid that has this kind of mother is going to end up like Shane, you know what I mean? I know, I, 
I hope I don't sound mean or something like this, but of course I'm just guessing, you know, you can also write in the comments if you agree with me or, or disagree or, or what you think or whatever, but yeah, I'm just assuming right now, just, to, just by the way um, his mom has been like and also what he has said in his apology videos. But now let's move on to how Shane Dawson handles criticism. So here we have Shane Dawson. He is on set for his movie Not Cool that he filmed in 2014. So Shane here, he is the director, so he wrote the script for his movie and he also put all of the jokes in the script. And all of the jokes, or most of them, are extremely, extremely inappropriate. And there's a woman on set with him and I think she is his assistant director, I'm not sure. And this woman, she was often saying that his jokes were way, 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 way too gruesome and disgusting. Okay, okay, now we know that, let's watch this. The script is not that raunchy. Somebody out there is a rat and they're going around saying this is the raunchiest movie ever made and it's I've had clients that have gone online, watched Shane's stuff, and said, I don't want to be a part of that. When I was an actor, I was auditioning for everything. I don't quite understand the logic of being picky when you have no job. It's been mentioned many, many times that you is a problem for people. So if we just like lose that, I'm just saying. I'm not taking anything out of the movie to please a bunch of out of work actors in Pittsburgh who should be lucky to get an audition for a feature film. I no director has ever taken anything out of a movie to get somebody to audition. I'm angry that we're finding out about this. Shane, stop it, you can't go. We have I'm too much to do. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do this. It's fine that you're saying Facebook. I just wanna say it too many times. But she also said you Facebook stuff. I know, so we can use it, but say if the opening montage doesn't have Facebook and it's like generic, whatever. Do you understand what I'm saying? I she do. says Facebook No, I do, stuff. it's okay, it's okay. So I just, why are you saying it's not okay Because she's it saying twice. it so many times that so it's like- So we can only say it once? So, so then we either can say it or we can't. No, that's not- it, Do you understand what she's saying? It, it's- No, I don't either. Just, okay. just the, just the second get, one, the line. Let's get to acting yeah. notes and not like- Word notes. <laughs> okay. How long is it if you go from the top till we get to Scott and Tori? Twenty-four minutes. I think if we do the cut, just take that scene out. I honestly don't even think you're gonna miss it. Okay, we can try. We can I mean, try. I don't want to do that right now. Why can't we do it right now? So that's why you're here for a couple days. And I just felt like after we watched it, I'd rather like be excited and talk about the movie, like just jumping into it, being like, "This is the problem." No, it's like, but well, this is, can't not say anything. I'm not gonna sit here and just tell you like it's done, it's ready to go. So we've been working our asses off on this on for. Well, you're and only it's awesome. I'm I think it's literally. I was sitting here listening to every single laugh. I can tell you the level from one to ten of each joke. Was there any that didn't play? Not really. I mean, the things I was nervous about yeah. were. We have them. This. I'm really annoyed because I've never like yelled at you guys that I don't know. I've been yelled at <laughs> for the record. Whoa, <laughs> Shane is such an empath. Am I right? No, you're not, Shane. Oh my God. So like, I can see Shane Dawson here. He was directing this movie and he was acting like a complete jerk on set while he was filming this movie and the funny thing is his movie freaking flopped his movie got yeeted with like freaking one star reviews <laughs> love it when people that are acting like they're like some sort of super duper famous hollywood director but then his movie doesn't even do good oh wow very sad and the thing is like most of famous directors they don't even act like this on set. Never like yelled at you guys that I don't know. I've been yelled at. They like respect other people. Oh my god. And there was this woman with him on set and she is just there to help him. You know what I mean? She is like giving him ideas, telling him what he can do better or whatever. And then she was criticizing him if he, if the jokes were too bad. For example, there was this scene in this movie where a homeless person was supposed to eat poop. Yes. And of course, Shane Dawson didn't really find anyone that wanted to get this role and act this out, which I totally understand. If you are playing dumb roles in movies, it's very likely that other movie companies are gonna call you only when they need like dumb roles, you know what I mean? You're not gonna get anything serious if you're playing a homeless person eating poop, you know what I mean, Shane? <laughs> Just saying, yeah. But basically, but like you could see, like this woman, she wasn't that bad to Shane Dawson, right? She was just like helping him and sit and criticizing him, but she must be in a bit of a jerk back to her, even shouting at her. Never like yelled at you guys that I don't know. I've been yelled at. Not very empath of you, Shane, but yeah. Now, let's take a look at how Shane Dawson talked about this woman that was just there to help him, give him advices, and then criticize him if, he, if his jokes were too bad. Let's listen how he talked about her. So who is this person? Do we know? You don't want to say? I can't really say because she's actually mentally ill and like this would really throw her off the edge. Oh. Um, and well, like, now you know who it is. And you know, like, you, and you know like women abuse. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh, <laughs> whatever. So, but what I would do, because she her whole thing is she like always would tell people that I'm a bad person, that I'm racist, that I'm this and that. Oh. So what I would do is I would have, you know, a knife to her throat. 
and I would make her say the most fucked up, awful, racist, sexist, whatever shit, homophobic it. shit. Yeah, I would make her say that shit and be like, if you don't say it, I'm going to slice your neck. And then she'd say it. And then I'd rip her tongue out and be like, that's the last thing you ever said. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, Shane. Oh, my God. So imagine there was this woman with him on set that was just there to help him to make his goddamn movie better than it is. And she was just giving him ad advices and then telling him if a joke in his movie is way too disgusting and gruesome. And what does he do? He goes to a podcast and makes up this murder fantasy about her. And on top of that, not only is Shane Dawson here fantasizing about literally eating this woman. And the thing is, this podcast is way, way, way longer, and he is talking in details, I repeat, in details, how he would like to get rid of this woman, and in a very, very, very disgusting way. And I was thinking about it, and I'm like, okay, I guess I would rip off every single, every single fingernail. And on top of that, he would like her to say some racist, sexist things, so not only is he gonna brutally eat her, but also destroy her, uh, what is it called in English? Orthspor. Or spore? Reputation. Reputation. Yes, not only does he want to brutally eat her, but also destroy her re reputation at the same time. Wow, Shane, you're such an empath. Like, seriously, no sane person would think like that. Imagine, just because she was annoying you on set by criticizing you and trying to help you, Shane! So he decided to go to a podcast and talk like that in front of a huge audience. This is not normal, Shane. Like, seriously, this is not normal. How his brain is fu fu functioning. Is that good? English, not sure. But how his brain is fu functioning. Fu functioning. Functioning. How his brain is functioning. It's not normal at all. Shane Dawson, just saying. And another thing. This podcast was filmed like 2014 or 15. So it looks like Shane has found his hobby of literally just like assuming other people's mental disorders very early. Because like you can see... So who is this person? Do we know? You don't want to say? I can't really say because she's actually mentally ill and like this would really throw her off the edge. She's calling this woman mentally ill. Yeah. And to be honest, I don't think she told him her personal story about her mental issues, so I think he's probably just making this up to insult her. Like, there's something wrong with having mental issues. No, Shane, there's nothing wrong with it, okay? Puh, disgusting. You are stig stigmatizing mental issues. I hate when I'm doing an epic rant and my bad English destroys it. Very annoying, but you know, that's, that's just life, being a, uh, uh, being a big foreigner, yes, okay, but yeah. Really say, because she's actually mentally ill and like this would really throw her off the edge. Well, and you know, listen. like, women abuse, wah, uh -huh, wah, wah. whatever. Yeah, exactly, I agree, who cares about women abuse? I don't care, whatever, like, shut up, both of you, so annoying. But I'm not gonna show you the whole podcast because, like I said, this is just the beginning of his murder fantasy yes this just gets worse and he is talking in very big details how he would literally like to torture her yes he is sounding like a huge mafia boss and also it's kind of creepy to me how he knows so many torture moves okay i guess i would rip off every single fingernail <sighs> like like Pliers. one by one no it looks like he has tortured people for many years the way he's talking right there now we are gonna take a look at shane dawson's apology video again because there was a part in that video where he was talking about this murder fantasy yes let's take a look at that so in the segment I started talking about, you know, uh, figuratively murdering someone. And a lot of people believe that I was talking about her. That was about another woman. Not that it makes it okay because it doesn't. Talking about anybody like that is crazy, especially a woman. Whoa, Shane, you're such an empath. Whoa, wow. C could you all see how he has grown, Shane Dawson? Yes. Like, five years ago when he was in, in this podcast, he was talking about like, uh, who cares about women abuse? I'm gonna tell all of you about how I'm gonna torture a woman. Yeehaw, he was like that. But now he's being like, uh, I would never talk that like that, especially about a woman. Wow, you're such an 
But it was about a white woman. And the ironic part is that woman was just trying to get through to me too. Like she was just trying to explain to me why what I was making on the internet was hurting people. It was at a time when I was making a movie and I was constantly on the defensive. I felt attacked all the time. There was a woman involved who was constantly giving me criticism and telling me that I needed to, to stop making so many offensive jokes. And I'm so sorry to her. And the reason I was so upset wasn't just because of that. There's so many other reasons. I mean, this this person really tried to, I don't know, there, there was a lot. They tried to ruin my relationship. They, it was, it was, it was a lot. I had a lot of anger for this person. So that anger is gone, by the way. It's all gone. So right here, Shane Dawson is talking about that there was this woman a few years ago, like five, six years ago, that was calling him out on Twitter. And I'm not sure if this is the same woman that we saw in his earlier apology video. But this woman was black and she was calling him out because he was making a lot of racist jokes and offensive jokes in his videos and she was calling him out because of that Jane Dawson had like spoken about that woman on his twitter and when this podcast came out where Shane is talking about his eating fantasy a lot of his fans thought Shane was talking about this woman that was calling him out on twitter and she got attacked with so much of freaking hate and his fans Shane fans attacked her with racism. Yes, a lot of freaking racism. And the thing is, so many people still thought um, this podcast was about that, that woman on Twitter because she he never stopped his fans from attacking this woman on Twitter. So she got bombarded with freaking hate. But now finally, like five, six years later, he's finally coming forward and saying, oh, no, 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 this podcast was not about the woman on, the, on Twitter. It was about the woman on set with me that was supposed to help me with my goddamn movie. Like, oh, this is such a clown. Don't you wait. I've been trying my best to not do this, but I just have to do this because Shane is such a clown. Honk, 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 Shane. Oh, my God. <coughs> You're such a clown, Shane. So yes, like you can see, actually a lot of people were calling Shane Dawson out back in the day when he was making very, very, very offensive jokes. So Shane Dawson, the whole internet was not like lol, ha ha, over the jokes. There are so freaking many people calling it out. And I'm sure a lot more people did, yeah. And also, don't you all remember when Shane was being like, hey, my audience didn't say anything, so how should I know that I was being offensive? No one said anything. No, that's because your audience or your fans were actually helping you attacking other people and being racist. That's what that that's what they were doing. And also, why would you expect fans like this? They're literally teenagers that literally just work for you when you ask them to do. Why would you expect them to call you out? No, you cannot put the blame on freaking teenagers that will do anything for you to please you because you're a famous YouTuber. No, that's not how it works, Shane. Like, oh, it's so annoying that he's put in the blame on other people. I know this is, uh, I have already talked about this, but yeah, so annoying. There are people calling you out and you just attacked them, made up murder fantasies about them or simply blocked them on Twitter. And then on the same time, he's be like, hmm, why didn't my audience call me out? Hmm. <laughs> like, shut up, Shane! Oh my god! And now... Ah, you also have to drink your water, so you won't be dehydrated, my friend. Yes, but now, back to why Shane Dawson cannot take criticism. Remember when I was talking about, like, hmm, I wonder why if his... No, I wonder if his upbringing was a part why he cannot take criticism. Because we were talking about, like... That his mom seems like to never say anything to Shane when he was doing something very sexual. And Shane doesn't even said in his apology video like, Oh, wow, I have talked to the mother of my 12-year-old cousin and the mom didn't care. I remember a few years ago I reached out to her mom, my aunt, and I was like, I'm so sorry. Oh my god, I can't believe I did this. Like, this is insane. I can't believe I talked to, you know, my cousin like that. And, you know, she was like, oh my god, we know, we know. It's okay, it was funny. Like, we all thought it was funny. Like, th that's just how our family is. Oh, did she not care about this? Like, what, what is going on in this family? But yeah. So I think this norm normalization of disgusting, disturbing sexual things and he just got away with, ev with everything and no one said no to him or criticized him in a nice way, I think that could be a result why he is like that as an adult. But of course you write in the comments down below what you think. <laughs> I'm not a professional so I'm, I'm, just, I'm just assuming, I don't know, you know what I mean? But the thing is, Shane is always assuming other people's mental disorders so I can assume his family life, you know? Um, so, this is the end of this video. Oh, hi! 
because <laughs> this video is already way, 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 way too long. So I just think it's best to end it right now. And if you made it this far, wow, <laughs> very nice, very impressive. But yeah, but I have few last words about Shane and about this whole thing. Okay, personally, I don't think people that actually want to be better and want to be good people, I don't think they deserve to be cancelled or be victims of cancel culture. So if Shane Dawson genuinely want to become a better person, then I, I personally think that he deserves another chance. Okay, now I want to be kind of nice to Shane because I've been roasting him way too much in this video. I think Shane Dawson is very talented, you know, and he's also very entertaining when it comes to making videos on YouTube. And now what I personally think Shane Dawson has to do now is, first of all, get rid of toxic friends, aka Jeffrey Star. Because, okay, let's be honest, Jeffrey Star, how he acts, he's very similar to how old Shane used to act, you know what I mean? Anyone who knows Jeffrey personally knows that he does just say crazy things randomly and just says the most horrible horrible, shocking things at all times just to be funny or be shocking or be interesting or unique and hmm, sounds very similar to old Shane Dawson if I should be honest but yeah but personally I think the more Shane Dawson hangs out with Jeffree Star the more of old Shane he is becoming if that makes sense because Jeffree Star he's bringing out all of this negativity in Shane Dawson and making him be kind of a mean person. So yeah, I would say it's very important for Shane Dawson to surround himself with good and wholesome people, you know, that only bring out the good side of him, yes. And also, what would be very nice is that if Shane Dawson stopped acting like such an empath all the time, it's so annoying and it's so ridiculous. And also another thing that I noticed that I find very interesting, and that is before Shane Dawson became an empath, he actually liked taking care of his, uh, oh, taking care of himself, he also liked taking baths, and he did not mind if people thought if he was rich or not. But after he became an empath, he doesn't like showering, he's wearing the same clothes all the time, and also, he acts like he's incredibly poor. Like, it's so ridiculous, you're a millionaire, Shane. Like, pff. yeah, you know, and I'm not gonna say more about this whole thing. Now it's your turn, person watching this video. Now the comment section is yours, and I want you to write your thoughts, and just whatever that comes in your mind, just write it down below, yes. And also, if you want to, you can follow me on social media, because I don't post on YouTube very often, so I'm going to post more on social media, so I will update all of you, and you will know what I'm doing, and stuff like this. Yes, you can do that, and again, thank you so much for watching this very, very, very long video, and okay, now I want to rant a little bit, if you don't mind. Who making this video was so freaking hard. Okay, let me tell you something. I started making this video in the beginning of July. It's August now. I have been working on this video for one whole month. Like, this video has been so, so, so hard for me to make. And uh, maybe some of you are being like, wow, this video isn't even that good. But I'm trying my best here, okay? But yeah, it took me one whole month to make this video and publish it. And oh my god, I'm so happy that I'm almost finished with this video. Oh, I'm so happy. Oh, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, thank you for listening to my small rant. But yeah, thanks to all of my patrons. And yes, I hope all of you will have a nice day today. Yes, bye-bye everyone. <laughs>